Let's go Falcons Hey yo, better up better Let up. the bump begin Solano Falcons Bound to show you how you win Solano Baseball All have tight skills tight skill. All stars everywhere With highlight reels Everybody watch out Cause when it's game time game We going time. for the W Gonna make our name shine Falcons dominate When the game's on the line So go get your bell Solano Why? Cause it's game time Hey yo, it's game time So let the games begin so on the, on the field and we gain in a win Hey a yo, win. it's game time, don't you hear the people chant? Cause That's this right. is our house, make way for the champions game time Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Solano College Sports Network, where we got a BVC baseball matchup between your Solano Falcons and the Marin Mariners. I'm Stosh Moyda, and joining the booth with me today is Mr. Zach Poff. Zach, how you doing today, brother? Hey, it feels great to be back, and I'm looking forward to this contest. Solano, of course, 6-0, the only undefeated team in the Bay Valley Conference, and they are taking on one of the powerhouses in the Bay Valley Conference in the College of Marin today. 5-1 conference record, 6-0 and three, 11, six and one overall for Marin. And I mean, this has been the best rivalry in the BBC over the last decade. Yeah, you know, Solano comes in on a six game winning streak. Since the Bay Valley Conference started, they have not lost a game. Marin right on their tails with that five and one record, like you said. So today is ultimately for first place. You know, Solano always tough at home here at Billy Louise Yarborough Stadium. So it's gonna be a great matchup. Couple players to watch for Marin is Chris Kamen. He comes in boasting a 408. Uh, batting average that leads the team and he leads the team in hits with 20 so far on the year and then Matthew Tarantino just an RBI machine has 17 RBIs on the year and just going down this lineup it's just un it's a very hard team to beat and real quick too looking at Salon on the other hand you got maybe the best player in all Northern California in their shortstop Alvaro Rubacaba coming in batting 425 one home run 10 RBIs and one of the best defensive players, not just in California, but in all of community college baseball. Really looking forward to seeing him. And of course, they've got their best pitcher, in my opinion, on the hill today in Nate Janess. This kid has been solid all season long, two in one record and an ERA under two and a half. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. So now we're ready for today's starting lineups for your Solano Falcons. Alvaro Wakaba, sophomore shortstop, Van High School. Joey Dyson, freshman infielder and outfielder, American Canyon High School. Josh Lenny, freshman infielder, Montgomery High School. Garland Webster, freshman third baseman, Army Hill High School. Darian Evans, sophomore outfielder, Rodriguez High School. Bo Siegel, sophomore first baseman, Rodriguez High School. Ian Acosta, sophomore catcher, Vacaville High School. Briar Litz, freshman first baseman, Foothill High School. Josh Meekham, freshman outfielder, Vanden High School. Nathan Janess, sophomore pitcher, Benicia. All right, so you saw a Solano starting lineup. So here's the lineup today for the Marin Mariners. Leading off is Matthew Tarantino playing shortstop, followed by Sam Morgan, the right fielder. Ryan Schultz at third base. Steven Demartini at first. Dominic DeVille at DH. Jonah Sun in left field. James Potts in center field. Richard Herrera behind the plate and Jeff Villafana at second base. So that's one through nine and on the mound today for the Solano Falcons is Nathan Janest as you talked earlier partner. Tell us a little bit more about Nathan. Uh, Nate Janest just a guy has a good pace to the game. He, I mean I, I know Cliff Lee is a lefty but Nate Janest reminds me a lot of Cliff Lee. Fast pace and he does a good job of painting the corners too. I mean he doesn't have that overpowering stuff but he's the guy that knows how to get the job done, baby. Yeah, you know, Solano's going to need a good start from him today. You know, eat up a lot of innings to work into the back end of the bullpen. You know, Solano's bullpen's very strong this year with Adam Coates, Jay Wagner. And now you see a good picture here of the Bay Valley Conference standings. You see Solano on top at 6-0 and and Marin right on their heels, tied in second place with the with Napa at 5-1. and one. And Surprising start for Napa so yeah. far this year, 5-1 and one conference record. And uh, this is a big-time game right here. And... Uh, I know we're still kind of early part of the conference season, but uh, get a little momentum on your side if you can get this one. Yeah, you know, this is where the, you really have to come out and start winning games early to put yourself in a good position, you know, to take the Bay Valley Conference, maybe clinch early in the season, you yeah. know, to rest a couple people, but now it looks like we're just ready here for first pitch, and I'm excited for this game. How about you, partner? Oh, I can't be any more excited, especially with Selection Sunday. March Madness right around the corner. It's a good time here in the middle of March. First pitch inside ball one, and the first pitch is 108. I was waiting for that. You always, you're always pretty good about that. Yeah, look, I learned that from the Odaco Coliseum. Out <laughs> in Oakland. 
This one's chopped. Right to Alvaro Rubicaba. Picks it up. Throws it over to first for out number one. And that's Nate Genest right there. Just outside. Picking his pot, or his, uh, spots on the outer part of the zone. And Rubicaba, man, that kid is just fun to watch. Now it's going to bring up Sam Morgan, the right fielder. Sam's batting a 365 on the year, so he's having some pretty good year. Sam Morgan, the sophomore out of Sonoma Valley High School. First pitch in there, strike call, so the count goes 0-1. And today's umpires behind the plate, we have Matthew Marquez. And out on the base pass, we have Derek Eaton. So good officiating crew here today at Billy Louise Yarborough Stadium. Good curveball, swing and a miss, strike two. And that's exactly what Jeunesse needs to do today, just keep those hitters off balance because his fastball is maybe topping out 80, 82. Just misses the corner, ball one. Good pitch there, you know, 0-2. Don't want to give him anything he could hit. Maybe try to get him chase something. Change his eye level by throwing a little high. So the 1-2 pitch underway. Curveball in the dirt, and Morgan lays off that pitch, and count goes 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, nice take right there by Sam Morgan. That was a nasty pitch by Jeunesse. And the thing I like about Janest, he's a guy that's always changing speeds, trying to keep hitters off balance, and you kind of got to do that when you don't have that overpowering fastball. You know, Sam Morgan does have nine strikeouts on the year, so that's a pretty good number, pretty low, but he's uh, third on the team in strikeouts. Strike three called on the outside corner, and that's a second out of the inning. And Janest, too, uh, Early part of the season didn't have the strikeouts, but now he's got that total up to 20 now with that one, and he's done a way better job with that strikeout to walk ratio. For a little bit there, he had more walks than strikeouts. Now 20 strikeouts on the season compared to only 11 walks. Yeah, now it brings up Ryan Schultz. And Ryan. We were debating on uh, what, what we're going to go with, but yeah, we, we agreed. Whatever Mark goes with on the PA, <laughs> that's what we're rolling with, baby. Exactly. First pitch, Schultz is in there, strike call. The count goes 0-1, and, you know, he's batting a 325 on the season. But since conference play has started, he's leading the team with a 480 average with a 519 on base percentage. Good curveball is poked out into center field. Going back is Dotson. Dotson has a beat on it, and he makes the basket catch for out number three. So three up, three down, heading to the bottom of the first. And we're here bottom of the first, and we get a look at Eric Smith, the lefty for the College of Marin. He's on the hill, and you get a shot at Alvaro Rubicaba. He's leading off for the Solano Falcons here today, as you saw the lineup here before first pitch. Yeah, Alvaro leading this team in a lot of different categories. He's boasting a 425 batting average right now. He's been a perfect table setter for the Falcons so far this year, and he's a team leader, and he's shown it. Not just by the way he acts in the clubhouse, but what he's doing on the field. You know, they say hitting is contagious, and it starts all right here with Alvaro Rubicaba. But like you said, Eric Smith, the lefty on the mound today, comes in with a 378 ERA with a 2-2 two and two record on the season of four appearances. And he's gotten 16 and two-thirds this year. Strikeouts, walks, pretty much identical. 12 strikeouts, 11 walks. And uh, the thing I love most about getting back to Rubicaba, though, is he just sets the tone for this team atop the order. And if you look at Solano's lineup, man, it's it's been off to a really good start so far this year. Yeah, Rubicaba followed by Dotson, two very fast guys. You know, definitely stealing threats. They're one, two on the books here for leading the team in steals. And that's huge for guys like Josh Lenny and Garland Webster, the three, four guys. 
First pitch, Rubicaba. He checks a little bunt there. The first pitch is a ball. It takes it back, so he saw the first pitch. And right now, Rubicaba is definitely one of the front runners for NorCal Player of the Year. Yes. He's having an excellent year so far for the Falcons. Pitch in there, strike call. The count goes to one and one. Good fastball on the outside corner. So judging by the home plate blue there, Matthew Marquez, we're going to get a little outer part of the strike zone, a little extension there for the pitchers, which is big for Dinesh, along with Eric Smith, the lefty. 1-1 one, one pitch. Trying to drop it down. The ball is high. The count goes 2-1. And Eric Smith, the 5'10", 165-pound freshman out of Drake High School. He's got good velocity on his fastball so far. Let's see if he starts opening it up a little bit. Trying to drop it down. Fastball the outside corner. Count goes 2-2. Two and two. And he's kind of got that delay going from the ball of his glove to the pitching motion, too. It's almost Clayton Kershaw-esque a little bit, kind of get the timing off from the hitter. 2-2 pitch is lifted into right center field, going over his Potts. Potts has a beat on it. He is under it, and Morgan makes the catch, calls it off. So good play by the right fielder there for out number one. And looking at Marin's defense, too, of course, you got Smith pitching, Richard Herrada, the catcher, Steve Di Marini over at first, Jeff Villafana second, Matt Tarantino, the shortstop, Ryan Schultz, the third baseman, Sam Morgan, James Potts, and Jonah Sun right to left. Yeah, now it brings up Joey Dotson, the hot hit. Joey Dotson D. Right now. He was last week's Northern California Player of the Week. First time any Falcon has ever received that honor, so congratulations to Joey. First pitch to him is called a strike. Count goes 0-1. And it's funny, Tommy Pavese, maybe the best hitter Slano's had, was hating a little bit. He said, hey, if that award was around <laughs> when I was playing, I would have been the first. <laughs> so Tommy P having fun with his guys. Of course, helped Coach Stover for a little bit. And this one's lifted foul out of place, and the count goes quickly to 0-2. So Eric Smith doing a good job by throwing strikes and making the Falcons so far swing the bats. But Do Joey, a very smart hitter. He won't chase anything really out of the strike zone. He'll look for something to hit, something close, try to get on base, maybe steal a couple, and try to get one run here in the top bottom of the first inning. So the 0-2 pitch. Outside, ball one. And that's the thing I like about Dotson a lot. You know you're going to get a battle out of him anytime he's in the box. Does a good job fouling off pitches. And like you mentioned, maybe his biggest attribute is his speed. Mm -hmm. Very fast. I mean, he puts one on the ground right here. Fastest guy on the team for yes. sure, right? And this one's hit. Right to the second baseman, Villafana. He makes the play over at first, and that is out number two. So quickly, two up and two down for Eric Smith. And just like Nate Janess, they're doing a good job of hitting their spots here early on. And that's huge for a pitcher. Sometimes that first inning can be the biggest struggle for pitchers. You're trying to get in the zone. Also trying to figure out the strike zone that the home plate umpire is going to give you that day. And uh, they're both off to a nice quick start here. Yeah, it's a good sign, though. You know, both Rubicava and Dotson made good contact on the ball. Just happened to hit it right at somebody. And, you know, swinging the bats well. Solano has been hitting very hot as of late with rounding off six straight wins. First pitch to Lenny is high, ball one. Lenny comes into today's game batting a 348 with 15 RBIs. That number is good enough to, he's leading the team in RBIs. Yeah, I've been very impressed with their three, four guys here this year. Lenny along with Garland Webster, both off to great starts here. That pitch on the outside corner, strike called. Count goes to one and one. And they've added so much depth to this lineup. But it, it's huge for Eric Smith today to get those first two guys out like he did here. I mean, you don't want Rubicop and Dotson on the bases when you have to deal with Josh Lenny and Garland Webster. 1-1. One, one. And fouls straight back, and count goes to 1-2. and two. I think the PA announcer, Mark, might have flinched on that one. Might have? <laughs> Come on. I think, he was, I think he was flinching more, though, when he was trying to get through all the names from Marin, <laughs> man. It's... Yeah, they got some tongue twisters uh, down their lineup. So the one-two. This one's chopped right to Tarantino. He makes the grab, throws it over to first for out number three. So three up, three down, heading to the top of the second.
top of the second inning here with the four, five, six hitters coming up for the Mariners. Leading off is Steven Demartini, the first baseman for the Mariners. And how nice is it for head coach Steve Berenger? You're one through five hitters all batting over 300. I mean, a lot of depth in this lineup for Coach Berenger, and that's the reason why they're five and one in the BVC so far. Yeah. First pitch, Demartini Martini is in there. Strike called, so the count goes 0-1. Eight RBIs for the big first baseman. Yeah, you know, Marin sitting at 5-1. and one. Their only loss came on February 28th at home against Folsom Lake, where they lost that game 7-1. to one. That pitch is in there. Strike called 0-2. And, and, of course, Folsom Lake, a team that Solano swept, beat them 2-0. Well. Yeah, you know, it's first year they're in the BVC, and they're doing an excellent job. You know, they're holding their own. A good young team, all freshmen. Strike three, call, got him, looking for out number one. And this time I got your little backward K there, there for the go. on the scorecard. So that's two times he's got him looking. You know, he's painting that corner right now. Like, like you said, home plate umpire calling that outside strike. Oh, that's huge. So it's going to be a good pitching matchup here today with Dominic DeVille, the DH, coming up. Big boy's got two bombs this year, batting 316, also has 11 RBIs. First pitch, low, ball one. Out of Petaluma High School. Yeah. Same uh, place Johnny Gomes is from. Yeah, we know that he was a big Petaluma fan when they were back in the Little League World Series last year. Johnny Gomes now with the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, you know, he bounces around. He's a good clubhouse guy. Yeah, great. I mean, just ask the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. And the Oakland A's 2012. Yeah. yeah. I remember I was at that clinching game, and I actually got sprayed by some champagne on me from him, so it was pretty cool. This Ooh. one's ripped down the third baseline, a fair ball, and this one's going to roll into the corner and bounce off of the batting cage. He's going to go into second base, have himself a stand-up double. Good hit by Dominic DeVille. Yeah, just smoked that one. Nothing Garland Webster, the third baseman, could do, but just turn around and watch it. Good job by Josh Meekham, though. Get to that ball pretty quick. And, uh, I mean, you didn't have to worry about the speed on the base pass there, really, but... <laughs> But you know, you know that uh, batting cage down there in left field, down the left. It could be tricky. Foul on, yeah. It had a good bounce and it came back. You know, that's not there. That rattles in the corner. Maybe that turned into a triple. Yeah, I've seen it here before too. That ball gets lost over there, and if the home plate umpire doesn't call it dead, it's inside the park mm -hmm. home run most of the time. So, Jonah Sun up at the plate now, the left fielder for the Mariners. First pitch, just a bit outside. Ball one. I was waiting for your Bob Uecker. <laughs> 520 batting average for a Jonah son. Somebody paid attention in Sunday school. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's 13 for 25 on the season. So Ooh, good curveball in there. Strike call. Count goes to one and one. And that's the thing Janess has to do. He's got to keep hitters off balance, kind of sneak in that curveball when he gets a chance to. And as you mentioned, Jonah son batting 520, mm -hmm. but not an everyday starter for head coach Berenger. Oh, curveball just misses him inside. Ball two. Try to sneak that curveball back in and just didn't get enough bite on it. Jonas Slum with the open stance. Fastball outside. Ball three. Got James Potts on deck with 11 RBIs, hoping he gets a chance to bat with two guys on. Yeah, you know, you have an open bag down there on first base, you know, maybe set up a double play situation if you do decide to maybe try to pitch around and give him something to chase. But knowing Genesti wants to come right at him. Takes the throw back to second base, gets back safely, nothing going on. And right here, too, Sun's hoping he can get something to pull right here. You got Ruba Cabo holding DeVille on at second base, so a nice hold between that five and a half spot. This one's foul back out right at us. I yeah. got it. So now it's full count, one out, runner on second to Jonah Sun. What are you throwing here, 3 2? You going curveball with the base open at first? You know, I'm going that outside corner. He's been yeah. calling it all day. Curveball, and you call it a partner. Foul down the right field line. I get every once in a while I get lucky, <laughs> but you know they didn't they didn't make up this EPC thing for for no reason. Hey, Usually the opposite happens. <laughs> hey, like they said, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while, right? <laughs> so full count, set it up, do it again here. And Janess comes set, checks the runner, kicks, fires. Oh, oh, and ooh. that pitch just misses inside. Ball four. And you could tell Jonah's son was fooled on that pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean that was a. 
perfectly placed pitch. I mean, that's a hard pitch to take with two strikes. I thought Jeunesse had him there, but so we've seen here in the first inning plus, I mean, the outside yep. is the way to go. Inside corner, haven't got the calls yet for either pitcher. So now it brings up James Potts. A couple of ducks on the pond here for him. One out. First pitch to Potts. Strike on the outside corner to count goes 0-1. Yeah, if you're either Nate Janest or Eric Smith, that's where you're living today. Mm -hmm. It's living on the outside, baby. The 0-1. And this one's lifted into center field. Going back is Dotson. Oh, and Meekum makes the grab there. Called him off late. And kind of a basket catch once again. Maybe this wind has something to do with it. Oh, you you know how it is. As it gets closer to April, the wind starts to pick up. Luckily for Solano, they play here, so they know how it works. Mm -hmm. But for a visiting squad, it could be a little tricky for the outfitters there. It, it looked like that one was hit catcher. way catcher. more closer to center field mm -hmm. than it was to left. But Meekum there for the catch. Yeah, this wind today is blowing in. Looking at the flag, it's kind of doing cross the field from right field into the home field, uh, home team's dugout. So we're used to seeing the wind going out, you know, to the right center into that, that uh, home run gap, we yeah. like to call it. But now it brings up Richard Herrera, the catcher. 304 on the season for Big Rich. First pitch to him is outside, ball one. So count goes 1 0. A little bit of pop from Herrera this year, one bomb, only four RBIs on the season. Good curveball on the outside corner. The count goes to 1 and 1. And, I mean, when a pitcher's got his curveball working, everything is clicking, and that's been the case so far for Janest here. I mean, outside of DeVille's sharp double, that's pretty much been the ball that's – only ball that's been hit well. Now the curveball Ooh. swing and a miss. Strike two. Man, Janest has that curveball working today. And Janest coming into the year, I mean, it wasn't even known if he's going to be a starter, and he's just – run with it he's in my opinion the ace of the squad and he's their best pitcher i believe yeah he's really developed this year now the curveball just a bit low ball two and if you're richard gerardo right there you're just saying please don't call a strike please <laughs> don't call a strike and uh marquez helped him out right there i mean there's almost nothing you can do as a hitter right there yeah. throwing that nasty curveball two two underway Fastball just a bit outside, ball three, so good take there by Herrera. That's got to be a little bit frustrating for Janess there. That's a pitch he's been getting here early on, but a little too far outside on that one. Yeah, a good frame job by Ian Acosta. Yeah. You know, just a little bit out, he tried to pull it back, try to get the call, but umpire doing a great job being consistent. Runners on the move. This one's lifted in the left field. Meekum has a beat on it in foul territory. He's under it. He makes the grab for out number two, out for number three. So, Mariner Strand two, heading to the bottom of the second. Hi, everybody. Greg Poff here in the Solana College Sports Network studios, and we sure hope you're enjoying today's special game broadcast. And if you're interested in a career in sports broadcasting or you would like to take one of our sports broadcasting courses here at the college, you can easily find them listed in the SCC schedule of classes under communication studies. Come on over to our TV studio in room 121 and check us out. Be a part of the Solano College sports broadcasting team. We're here at SCSN. It's more than just sports. It's an education. Bottom of the second inning, still scoreless here at Billy and Louise Yarbrough Stadium. And thanks for staying tuned in to the Solano College Sports Network. The four five six hitters coming up today this inning for the Solano Falcons. Lead off is Garland Webster, the third baseman. Garland You know what he calls himself? What's that? What's Deion Sanders' nickname? 
prime time? Yeah, that's what the, I I go with G Money. That's my guy, but he he likes prime time a little better. At eight, this kid has been prime time this year. Yeah, three fifty four, one bomb, twelve ribbies. And that bomb was a grand slam back on Tuesday against Laney up in Oakland. And of course, as he steps up, he's hoping that wind will be gusting out. The wind died down, of course. So the first pitch to Webster, strike right on the outside corner. Count goes to 0 and one. Yeah, and you can tell early both pitchers know where the strikes are being called, and they're just living on the outside part of the plate so far here. Yeah, Garland's a good hitter. He scatters his hits all throughout the field, so you know he, he's a smart hitter. He's going to take a couple pitches to see what Smith is going to throw at him. That you pitch low, ball one. You know who he reminds me of? This is going to hurt. It's going to hurt for uh, you. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, he's at <laughs> Toronto now. He does. <laughs> my Josh Donaldson. My favorite player. Yeah. He does, though. A, good, yeah. a really good third baseman and just a gritty player. And Donaldson sprays all over the field, too. And this one's hit right to Tarantino. He feels it, throws it over to first for out number one. That was a nice job of Tarantino there. That ball took a little tricky hop and stuck with it. But speaking of that, how about the play Ruben Cava made the other day? Oh, back on Thursday. Yeah, hit it right up the box, and it took a tricky hop. Made a great stab and a great throw. It, it reminded me of Ozzy. Yeah. The, the wizard. wizard. The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, just watching that, I mean, it had me in awe. I, mean, I just watched that on replay over and over. Yeah, again. it was a great play. So Darian Evans swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. The count goes 0-1. It was Bubba Johnson-esque. Yeah. And uh, you were speaking with Bubba earlier today, right? He's yeah. here at the ballpark. He's playing for the Vallejo Admirals right now. He's oh, coming nice. here, you know, getting some work in, working with the guys. And, you know, one of the legendary Falcons that came through this program under Scott Stover. That pitch is in there. Strike called. Count goes 0-2. Yeah, him along with Victor Romero were the two best players I got to see, uh, I mean, Tommy Pavese too, but that was when we first started. We only did a couple of games. I mean, but, man, Bubba Johnson, that kid was just dynamite to watch. Yeah, I had the privilege of growing up with both of them, playing with both of them, and just watching to see what they did. I didn't realize Bubba was that old. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> just one year older than I. <laughs> yeah. You know, the part of the Fairfield Expos organization. You know, Victor Romero now an assistant coach at Oklahoma State. Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing really well in. right now. Yeah. Oh, two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Got him to swing over the top of that good changeup from Eric Smith, and that's the second out of the inning. And I've always said this, I mean, fastball changeup, the best combo to have for a pitcher, as you saw right there. I mean, Darian Evans pulled the string, and that was just a nasty changeup. And it looked like a fastball coming out, and then all of a sudden it just slows down. Yeah, it had a good bite, a downward bite yeah. on top of it. So now it brings up Bo Siegel, the first baseman, his grandpa, as they like to call him, in the <laughs> dugout. Pitch in the dirt, ball one. Yeah, and one. he doesn't mind the nickname because he can't hear it when they call <laughs> him that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that a couple times. Jake Poff, JT Blaze on the yeah. on the camera here today, J spring break, and uh, doing an excellent job there. Pitch is in there, strike call. Count goes one and one. And he's got that stupid little grin on his face like <laughs> he always does. So Bo is known as a pool hitter. What's Grandpa going to do? Swings at the high fastball and pops it up over our head so the count will go to one and two. Every time I see a foul ball come back this way, I just remember the one time in the playoffs some lady wasn't paying attention, <laughs> and she just took it right off the back. Kinda I mean, like that lady in the Pelicans game. Oh, the my game. gosh. Do you like that vine? Yeah, <laughs> uh, he sent me that. That was pretty funny. She took it right off the dome. Right off the grill, all because her daughter wanted to show her some little cat picture or something. <laughs> Curve ball, hit ripped down the right field line, foul. So the count will stay at one and two. And Eric Smith lucky there. He left a hanger right where Bo likes it, but pulled a foul. Yeah, just rolled over the top of it there. So set up and do it again. One and two. Two outs. Five on the second inning. Solano's still looking for their first hit. Oh, high and tight. And that's some chin music hits off his up near the head area, but hey, he's just lucky running. it wasn't the hip. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Solano's first base runner of the ball game. And exactly not what Eric Smith wanted to do there. It looked like he's going to have himself another one, two, three inning. And now we get our first chance to see him out of the stretch. So Ian Acosta coming up to the plate now, the catcher for the Falcons today. And that should be a rule. If you're a catcher, you're not allowed to use batting gloves when you bat. <laughs> Ian Acosta, old school. Yeah, a lot of. Solano Falcons players don't use batting gloves. That's what I like to see. You know, I feel like you get a better feel for the bat. And a few of them, too, have noticed one glove. 
<laughs> yeah. I didn't know this was golf. And he hits the first pitch high in the air, and the wind it's is going to be swirling. a tough one. Tough play. D. Martini is under it. He makes the grab for out number three. So Solano strands one, heading to the top of the third. Hey, everybody. Stosh Morty here with the Solano College Sports Network, where I've had the privilege of being your sports play-by-play -play broadcaster for the past couple years at Solano. And it wasn't until, Solano, until I came to Solano Community College where I actually found a new passion and a career path when I stumbled upon Com 75, Professor Greg Poff's class. I bounced around out of high school. I had a couple of different odd jobs here and there and didn't really have a career path until I stumbled upon this class. And ever since then, I found there's actually a career path in sports broadcasting, not just by being a broadcaster, working in front of the camera, but also working behind the scenes with our TriCaster systems, doing directing and producing, and also working behind a camera. This has been a great experience for me. I found me a career path which I was lost, and now I am found. And it all thanks to Calm 75 and here at the Solano College Sports Network. Top of the third inning with the 9-1-2 hitters coming up for the Mariners. Leading off is Jeff Villafana. Then back to the top of the order with Tarantino and Sam Morgan. First pitch in there. Strike call, so the count goes to 0-1. It's got like that beer name to it, Samuel Morgan. <laughs> Could be a knockoff of Sam Adams. I think we got something there, partner. <laughs> Curveball. Wow. Ooh, just misses inside. The count goes to 1-1. And that's how you know when you're starting to get confident as a pitcher. Instead of fastball being your primary pitch, you're going with that curveball. And Janessa is throwing that curve a lot here in the early part. And this one's ripped down the right field line, but it's going to go out of play for a long strike, too. And I can almost guarantee you, too, once he gets through the lineup the second time around, I think you're going to see that fastball a little more mm -hmm. kind of starting off the game with the curveball, trying to see if he can get in the hitter's heads. One, two underway. Outside, ball two. And Villafana in there mostly for his stellar defense at second base, batting 176 this year with two RBIs. Number nine hitter for Coach Berenger. And this one's lifted in the infield. Rubicaba and Garland is under it. Rubicaba calls off Garland. He makes the grab for out number one. It's like Elvis Andrews and uh, Adrian Beltre over there. <laughs> Who's going to get it? Those two guys, they're fun to watch. Oh, you yeah. hit a pop up to them. They're always having fun with each other. Hey, how about everybody touching Beltran's head? I know, that's that's classic, <laughs> man. Tarantino. Started, I believe, with the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. That's where it first started. Big and Poppy. Now, yeah, yeah, exactly. You get around Big Poppy, you're going to have fun. First strike to Tarantino. Count goes 0 1. But excellent job, Nate Janess. First time through the order, order, only that one hit allowed. Also, a two strikeouts, one walk. Yeah, both strikeouts got him looking. Good curveball, strike two. Man, when you have control of your curveball like that, it's almost unfair for yeah. hitters. So the 0 2. Lifts this one foul out of play, so the count will stay at 0 2. Good job, Tarantino, there. Just able to get a piece, stay alive, see at least one more pitch. Yeah, that was an excellent pitch by Nathan Janessa. Yeah. You know, he put it out there somewhere he had to chase, and which he got him to chase there, just got enough of it to hang in there. High fastball, ball one. And I think one of the biggest reasons why Solano is off to a 6-0 conference start is their very tough non-conference mm -hmm. schedule. Oh, kind of a check swing, and it goes foul, so the count will stay at 1-2. and two. Yeah, good job, Tarantino. They're battling, just getting a piece, staying alive. But getting back to Solano's, that 6-0 start, only two of their games on the non-conference schedule were against teams not ranked in the yeah. top 20 in Northern California. So they were battling against all the top teams in Northern California. And if they can make the playoffs, they're definitely going to see a couple of those. This was ripped right back at Janess. Rubicaba diving, makes the grab, throws it to first. Wow! 
What a grab by Alvaro Rubicaba and strong throw to make the out. I don't call him the vacuum for no reason. He gets everything. Every little thing that kid gets. I thought for sure that's going right up the middle. That's almost identical to the play he made earlier this week. Yeah. That ball stayed down. I mean, excellent job by Rubicaba just to pop up, make the strong throw. What more can we say about this wow. kid? Bubba Johnson's like, yeah, I used to do that too, though, all right? <laughs> Man, big time. Big time right there. Curveball just a bit low. Ball one to Sam Morgan, or Samuel Morgan, as you want to call him. <laughs> Man, Rubicaba, you can see that. He's grinning yeah. ear to ear right now. That was SC Top 10S right there. Yeah, that's the second time this week, as yeah. we're saying. I mean, maybe I'm gonna cut up a clip and tweet it out to him and see what they do with it. Yeah, try to get him on ESPN. Yeah. Strike in there, so the count goes two one. Yeah, Nate Janess, man, he's just been in control of this early part of the game so far, working fastball, curveball, really well. This one's ropes, right up the middle. That's a base hit for Sam Morgan. Josh Lenny kind of went down to a slide, but knew he couldn't get it there. Good effort. Now it's going to bring up Ryan Schlatz, who flew out to the center fielder in his first at bat. Ryan Schultz. I'm trying to debate on how many times I'm going to say this last name different today. <laughs> I'm just going to go with Ryan S. <laughs> Ryan S. One homer this year. Back in elementary school? I never got that far. <laughs> I dropped out after uh, kindergarten. Couldn't spell your name? Nah. So two outs, runner on first. Jeunesse comes set. Kicks, fires. Low and outside, ball one. And don't have to worry too much. Sam Morgan on the bases. Only one stolen base on the air, one for one. This one's lifted foul out of play. So count goes one and one. Jeunesse doing a little different move. You know, he's checking over his front shoulder. They also checked over the back shoulder. Maybe just trying to throw off the runner a little bit. Maybe see if he'll go. And as a righty, you got to be, uh, you got to spice it up a little mm -hmm. bit, a little harder to keep runners closer. So 1-1. One, one. And the dirt good block by Acosta right there. Count goes 2-1. And that's the thing Stover's always had was catchers that are just outstanding defensive players. And Acosta, man, he does not let he doesn't let much get by him. Yeah, he had Victor Romero, yeah. Kyle, Kyle Bible, Bible, Brian Aldridge. Yep. A lot of great catchers that have come through the Solano College program. It's probably been their number one position, I'm guessing, under Stover. Outside of shortstop. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think the depth is there for the catcher position. I think Bubba Johnson and obviously Rubicaba right there. But, I mean, you can name off four or five guys, the catcher position. Yeah, and all those guys. And then who is the one that's with the Oakland A's organization? Can I get a little help back there? <laughs> and this one's lifted into right field. Darian Evans ranging to his right. And that ball wow. is down. Fair ball. Evans gets it in quickly. And a good strong throw from Evans saves a run, so a two-out double from Ryan Schlatz. Man, big-time play right there. Darian Evans, though, able to get to that ball quickly and at least save a run for now and uh, showing off his strong arm there. But uh, now you got to deal with the cleanup hitter, Steve. Big Steve. Steve D. Martini struck out looking in his first at-bat on three straight pitches. No wonder I was saying his name wrong, and I think I left the T out. So there we go. That's why I went with Big Steve there. Eight RBIs for the lefty first baseman. So Jeunesse going out of the windup. Curveball low, ball one. And keep an eye over there, Sam Morgan. He's really running down the base pass, trying to get Jeunesse maybe to balk. And if you're Jeunesse here, don't even worry about who's on the bases right here. Just get the out. Good curveball, strike call. Count goes one to one. That thing whipped back in the strike zone. Yeah, that's just that's nasty pitch. And Janest, man, that curveball has been been money so far here. A one one. Another curveball just misses inside. Ball two. He's really got a good bite on that curveball today. 
and that just makes his fastball that much better too because hitters got to worry about that curveball. You can just sneak fastballs in. Trying to sneak that fastball in there. High and tight. Count goes a 3-1. and one. And you got Dominic DeVille on deck. And he smoked a double in his first at-bat too. So might not want to face him with the bases loaded. High and tight once again and walks him. So bases are loaded. And once again, we're bringing up Dominic DeVille one for one with that rip double back in the second inning. And h &S really did a good job limiting the walks. But two walks here early on and two and two-thirds so far. Bases loaded. Yeah, you need to get this guy right here. Dennis needs to buckle down. And if you're a coach, man, you, you got to love it if somehow the bases get loaded and you got your designated hitter up. Mm -hmm. First pitch curveball just misses, ball one. So now Janess may be trying to get a little too cute out there instead of just getting the ball over the strike zone, trying to paint perfectly. High, ball two. So Costa taking a little walk, just telling him to calm down. Now I believe if he does throw a ball here that Acosta will go out and talk to him. You could hear chatter from the Falcons dugout. Just trust it. That's exactly what Janess needs to do right here. There you there go. It's right down the heart of the plate, strike one. You know, sitting 0-2, that's the, that's the pitch you want right down the heart of plate, fastball. Yeah. Surprised he took that pitch. I think DeVille might have been wanting something a little more inside, maybe, like the double he ripped earlier. Outside corner, strike two. But that 2-0 pitch is probably going to be the best pitch he's going to see this whole at-bat. Yeah, back-to-back -back fastballs, and he's got that curveball working. 2-2. Two -two. You know what? I think DeVille's probably thinking curve right here, see if Jeunesse maybe fools him and comes with the fastball. And there is a curveball hitting the left field. Going back is Meekum. He's under it, makes the grab for out number three. So Marin strands the bases loaded. We're heading to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third, the 8 9 1 hitters coming up for the Falcons leading off is Briar Litz, the designated hitter today for the Falcons. And what a great job by Nathan Janess by yeah, getting get out, out of that the bases loaded jam. That's big time. And I mean, he just trusts his curveball right here. When he needs to make a pitch, he's gone curveball, but did a really good job battling back. Was down 2 0 in the count with the bases loaded and able to get the out. Three straight strikes. Finally got a fly out to left. Ryder swings at the first pitch and lifts it foul down the right field line, out of play. And Litz getting the start at DH here today. 214 average, one RBI for Mr. Litz. And uh, I know I left all our fans hanging there. Ryan Lipkin. <laughs> there it is. The catcher in the A's organization. Slow one. Outside corner call to strike count goes 0-2. And, and, man, how happy are pitchers when they see the name Matthew Marquez, <laughs> home plate umpire. I mean, you know you're going to get that extended strike call on the outside part of the plate. Curveball hit in the left field, and that ball is going to get down. And Briar Litz has himself a leadoff single. Oh, he's going to second, and he's in there safely. I didn't know Yasiel Puig played for Solano, <laughs> man. Just you got to love the aggression right there from Mr. Litz and. Turned a single into a double right there. And that's why you got to get the ball in quickly. Yep. You know, he read that, that it was a little bit slow. So, hey, I'm going to take off the second. I gave him a double in my book. Hey, me too, baby. Yeah. Number 26, Josh Nico. 
So Josh Meekham up at the plate now. The nine hitter today, left fielder for the Falcons. And we know what he's doing here. I'm going to get that runner over to third base, yep. one out. Get him 90 feet closer. Small ball, something that they love to do here at Solano. First pitch high, ball one. Yeah, you know, Meekham gets him over. One, that would be one out if he doesn't make it down there. And with the runner on third and Rubicaba up yeah. next. I mean, you, you got to think Rubicaba would cash him in with one out. But that's why they play the game, baby. I like how Eric Smith going CC Sabathia a little bit. That uh, Vallejo S hat crook to the side, baby. He gets the bunt down. It's popped up. And oh, oh, almost. Almost. Ryan Schlotz almost made an excellent play there. I thought he was going to get it, but he trapped that one. And uh, Meekum's like, hey, coach, just call the bunt off, all right? Yeah, he was trying to do the Manny Ramirez right there. <laughs> Good old Manny. He went through your guys' organization for a little <laughs> bit there. Never got out of the minors, right? Yeah, he's still in double A. <laughs> so the 1-1 one -one to Meekum. And he gets the bunt down right to Ryan. He picks it up, throws it over to first. And, oh, Meekum almost beat it out there. But he gets the job done and gets Briar Litz over to third with Alvaro Rubicaba coming up. And he's going to get a bunch of high fives in the dugout for that yep. one. Yeah, just... You know what Bill Belichick says? Just do your job. That's exactly what Meekum did right there. Exactly what you want. You got your number nine hitter up with a runner on second base, nobody out. Just whatever you got to do, get him to third base. Yeah, and well, the way this game's going, it's been pretty much a pitching duel. We're all stranded at zeros here in the bottom of the third. Solano can strike first right here with Alvaro Rubicaba at the plate. He Rubicaba. flew out to the right fielder in his first at bat. Sophomore out of Vanden. First pitch outside, ball one. Listed at 5'7", 155. I don't, I don't quite know if he's even hitting 155. Uh, I think with all the gear on, he's, he's at 155. <laughs> 155. He drops down a bunt, and it's a good one. If it stays fair, oh, and just rolls foul. Must have hit a sunflower seed out there. Yeah, this field, man, you'd be seeing balls take the weirdest hops and everything, and that one just shot left. A good idea by Ruba Copper right there. Kind of a safety squeeze. And if that stays fair, he got himself a big Yeah, that's single. for sure. A bunt single. You got the bat. Ruba Copper's bat. He just was placed there on home plate. So the 1 1 count to Alvaro Ruba Copper. Runner on third. One out. Prime time opportunity for an RBI here. And Ruba Copper, another guy that doesn't pull the ball. His hits go all over the place. And they're checking out the bat, see if it's the pine tar. Yeah, the George Brett, <laughs> right? George Brett rule there. I was, I was hoping something else would happen because then I would have <laughs> loved to see Stover do his best George Brett impersonation <laughs> coming out of the dugout. And this one's lifted in the right field. Is it deep enough? Morgan is under it, and Breyer fakes the run. Good, strong throw from Morgan there to save a run for the Mariners. Stover is not happy right now as Briar Litz maybe not in the best position, kind of a little late getting back to the bag there. And just did not have a good jump at all. And Stover just looked at him like, really? But, you know, this team's a tight-knit team. You know, they've been playing next guy up. If I can't yeah. get it done, get, now it brings up Joey Dotson. Let's see if he can pick up Rubicaba here and get that run in. So Rubicaba 0 for 2. Joey D grounded out to second, his first at bat. 258, nine RBIs. Fakes the bunt, strike called, the count goes to 0-1. Then Dodson hoping he can hit double digits with RBIs. One away from hitting 10. Solano rocking their camo jerseys. Well, yeah, Tyler was telling me these are their favorite ones. Yeah, Coach Stover wasn't going to let him wear it until he earned this jersey, so they have earned Six it. 6 and 0, Coach. And this one's hit right to the third baseman. Ryan makes the play, throws it over to first, and that is out number three. So Solano strands a runner at third, and we're heading to the top of the fourth.
Tied up at zero here in the top of the fourth at Billy Louis Yarbrough Stadium. You're tuned in to the Solano College Sports Network. Stash Morning, Zach Poff here on the call. And we have the six, seven, eight hitters coming up for the Marin Mariners. Hey, hey, I got to ask you real quick. Who you got win it all? It's March Madness. Who you going with? Real quick. Off the fourth for Marin. Come on. We ain't got all day. Jonah? I'm going to go yeah. Duke. Ooh. No Kentucky? No Kentucky. They're going to beat Kentucky in the finals. I, you know what? Watch out for Arizona. Hey, watch out for Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> First pitch, lifted foul down the right field line. Count goes 0-1. And Jonah's son got to walk his first at-bat. Man, I'm just waiting for another, like, 83 NC State team to come and surprise everybody under Coach V, Coach Vil Jim Valvano. Yeah. Maybe he gave the best speech in sports history. Yeah. Outside of Lou Gehrig, of course. Oh, this one's hit right to Rubicaba. Scoops it up, throws it over to first for out number one. I love it when a ball's hit short. Get to see the kid in action. He no. is fun to watch. Yes, he is. You know, flashing the leather up there. Now it's going to be James Potts. Who you enjoy watching more, him or Bubba? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm not going to answer that because I know Bubba's sitting around here somewhere. If yeah, I say he's Alvaro, coming for you. He's watching. <laughs> he's got the I headset know Bubba's on. Gonna come smack me in the back of the head if I don't say Bub. I, you know what, though? I don't know if Bubba would say Bubba. <laughs> Just saying. You can ask him. Yeah, he's sitting right behind you. Why don't you ask him? So, O one one count to Potts. And the dirt scoots away from Acosta. The count goes to one and one. So we got one for Bubba Johnson. Of course, Big Kahuna behind us. I'm even it up. I'm going Alvaro. It's tough. And I'm not going to be the tiebreaker here. Come on. <laughs> no fun. And this one's lifted out of play. The count goes to one and two. You know what I am hoping for, though? Is a sharp foul ball hit right over Solano's dugout. Because we got our guy JT Blaze, Jake Poff, there for, on the camera. <laughs> I, I could see him panic, fall backwards, and do a little double dip. Yeah, don't do the ZPC now. <laughs> it only works on sports, not brothers. Oh, Ooh. just misses outside. The count goes to two and two. That's got to be frustrating because, I mean, you've been getting that call all yeah. day. Maybe curved around the plate a little yeah. too much. I, I mean, in my opinion, I thought it was a little off. but. And this one's hit. Right to Lenny, scoops it up, bobbles it, throws it to first, and he's out at first. Woo. Good job staying with it. Yeah, that was a pretty close play down there. Yeah, and it, good job. Potts out of the box pretty quick and made that a lot closer. Yeah, Derek Eaton down there, the base umpire had to make the tough call, and he got it right. So two outs, and it brings up Richard Herrera. Herrera. Hey, don't worry, I did that earlier too, <laughs> so... Make me not feel bad. I, you're a good, good partner. <laughs> first pitch outside, ball one. Herrera flew out to the left fielder in his first at bat. So 0 for 1 today. And this one's ripped right to Rubicaba. Easy High money. Up. Throws it over to first for out number three. Three up, three down. Heading to the bottom of the fourth.
Bottom of the fourth, still scoreless. The three, four, five hitters coming up to the plate. Josh Lenny, who I think has the best walk-up song of all the Falcons, Eastbound and Down, from the great movie Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to disagree there. Oh, and this one's kind of poked in the right field. Tough play. It gets fair down ball. fair. It's going to roll into the corner. And Lenny's going to stay at first. That's a leadoff single for Josh Lenny. I'm a hip-hop guy, so I can't, <laughs> I can't join that, that party. See, back in business right here. G Money, prime time. And uh, he's, he's not having a good look over down to Stover. He's like, really, I, I'm batting 354, coach, and you want me to bunt? Because you're probably going to see the bunt here. You, all, you, you have to. Nobody out. you got to run around base. Stover, it's about 99% of the time he's going to ask for a bunt. But if I'm Webster here, just bunt it foul twice. Let him swing. This one's foul. Back count goes 0-1. So. See, that just shows you the trust that Stover has in Garland mm -hmm. Webster. Now he's like, kid, you had your, you had your chance. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have faith in the young man who has an outstanding freshman campaign going. Pick over the first. Nothing working. Lenny just kind of flipping his hand up there, trying to distract the pitcher. And Webster let off the second, grounded out to short. And he ropes this one. Oh, what a grab there by Villafana, trying to turn two. And wow. he's safe at first. Ooh. What a play by Jeff Villafana. Hashtag SC top 10. Wow. He's, he's trying to get right in there with Rubicaba. And man, what a play. And after that, heads up play to get the lead runner at second. And they were very close to doubling up Garland Webster there. Yeah, good I'm, strong throw from Matthew yeah, Tarantino yeah. at shortstop position. Yeah, great defensive game so far here early on. So Darian Evans coming to play 0 for 1 struck out. And in his first at bat, looking to right the ship here. He has his elephant year out, so he needs to tuck in that back pocket. Let's see if he'll bring him some good luck. A little hit and run, chops it foul. What was that stat you are telling me? I believe a couple of years ago I saw a stat, stat from the Major League Baseball that batters who had an elephant ear, and elephant ear is when your pocket is outside yeah. of your back pocket there. And, and Darren Evans right there. He heard you. He tucked it in right, right after see? he said that. He really did. Yeah, I tell him before games, man, make sure you put If he gets pocket. a hit right here, your theory is correct. So that stat Just say it. The stat line was the batters with elephant ears went two for uh, 20 for 150. And that is not good. That's, yeah, that's like 175. Was, yeah, I believe it was like 40 of them were strikeouts, something Ooh. around there. That's all you need to do, just tuck it in. Yep. But you know, when you have the batting gloves back there, it's hard to tuck it in. So the 0 1. High ball one. And this is a guy that's really starting to get hot now. During non conference, was batting right around the Mendoza line. Now he's up to 264 with five RBIs. You like that? And he's a guy, if he gets hot, man, he can really just add so much depth to this lineup. Yeah, you know, in conference right now, his stat line 348 base percentage, a 423 on base, and a 478 slugging percentage. Yeah, so he's almost got that 1,000 OPS. Mm -hmm. With a double, a triple, three RBIs, four runs scored, eight hits. And there's a strike on the outside corner. The count goes 0-2. Been very impressed with Eric Smith here. He's just doing a good job. And he's been really throwing that fastball a lot. But every once in a while, he'll throw in that change up. And that's what he got Darian Evans yeah, the to first swing time. and miss at for strike three. Yeah, you know, he's only getting two hits so far in this game. That ball's in the dirt. That change up once again. Count goes 2-2. Two and two. He's like, you ain't getting me again. That one a little lower than the one that got him. Mm -hmm. And Darian Evans. If I, I, I would say this guy could probably hit a ball farther than any other Falcon. Yeah. He looks like a middle linebacker. Kind of looks like Bam Bam. <laughs> oh, he lifts this one out of play. So good battle here by Darian Evans to stay alive. And, of course, Darian Evans. I mean, this kid was a stud football player at Rodriguez High School. Also helped Rodriguez High School win a section championship My in baseball. Mater. Good go Mustangs. But uh, football has fallen off quite a bit for Rodriguez yeah. ever since Coach Bent got let go, and that was a horrible decision for your alma mater, yeah. your high school. Coach Bent, one of the best football coaches around, and I believe he's at uh, 
American Canyon helping out there. Yeah, and American Canyon's got a good program going on, the newest really high good. school around this area. And uh, they got a couple of kids playing at Oregon. Yeah. Jamon Dotson along with uh, Chris Cisse, who was starting corner in the Rose Bowl and the championship. Swing Ooh. and a miss, strike three. That high cheese, man. Yeah, couldn't lay off that one there. Fell in the trap. So got him with the change the first time, came with the high cheese the yeah. second time. And that's just the most, I, I believe that's the most lethal combo a pitcher can have, man. You have that killer changeup and that fastball. I mean, just look, I mean, well, Clayton Kershaw's got everything. Yeah. But when his changeup and fastball is working, as it was against Colorado Rockies last year, when he had his, should have been a perfect off. Oh, Hanley. Hanley. See ya. <laughs> so Bo Siegel coming up. He was hit by the pitch in his first at bat. First pitch in there, strike one. That's probably the best pitch he's going to see right nope. there, right over the heart of the plate. Are you one of those guys that you should just swing right away, or are you one no. of those guys that take pitch, take a couple? You know, it's But sometimes that first pitch, the best pitch you're going to see, the whole at bat. But we're still early in this game in the fourth inning. You, know, you want to throw pitches. You want to get the Two starter. outs, though. You want to get into the bullpen. You want to get yeah. in and throw pitches. I can't win this argument, can I? Nope. <laughs> Ooh, checks the swing. He holds up. Ooh. And I love how the home plate umpire asks the infield umpire. Like, he can really see from right there that angle. Like, Yeah, so 1-1 one, one count now to Bo. You know, this wind is just changing directions. Now it's blowing in right on us from center field. So Bo's going to have to get good contact and keep it low. Hey, there's a reason why they call it Mother Nature. Just can't make up its <laughs> <Yeah>. mind. <laughs> count goes 2-1. You're going to stay out of that one, not get in trouble there? Exactly. <laughs> My mom does watch these broadcasts. I tried to get Tyler last week. He did the same thing. I gotta wait till I get on the mic with the old man behind us running <laughs> the board today. He would jump in now. He'd still be talking about it right now, to be honest. <laughs> oh, and this one's lifted in the left field. Son is under it. Son can't find it. It drops down, and it's a foul ball. Once again, that win just kept pushing it and pushing it. I think Jonah's son might have lost it there for a minute. So now the count goes two and two to bow. Two outs, runner on first. And that's how you know I wasn't feeling it today. If you look at my defensive chart right there, I've got left field where right field's at. <laughs> and that's not good. But luckily, you're doing the play-by-play, -play, so you're calling their names. Yep. Good thing you're not looking at my stuff, too. <laughs> I can't read your chicken scratch anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I guess I can go ahead and switch that. <laughs> Typical Dodgers fan over here. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. At least we're not going to be in last. Oh, the Rangers actually will yeah. be without you, Darvish. Now, Tommy yeah, John Astros, surgery. Astros will still be down there too. I don't know. They made some nice moves. Picked up Evan, Lowry. Evan Gaddis. Yeah. A little bit of pop. They made some other moves too, but I'm too old. I can't. I can't remember. Two, two, and the dirt. Ball three. So Good full count. Yeah, full count. Bases loaded. Garland will be on the move here. Let's see if Bo can find a gap right here with Garland to move and try to score from first. And you know what it always happens? Usually when a guy should make a catch for that final out, usually something happens right here where yeah. they find a way to get a run. Probably just jinxed it, though. This was rope down the right field line. Foul. But Bo, you can tell it's each pitch. He's getting way more comfortable against the lefty Smith. I mean, he's making good contact mm -hmm. right there and just pulled it a little foul. And you know how it is as a batter. You get you get plucked in your first at bat. Yeah. You want to come back and do some damage. How are you doing? Outside, ball four. So great at bat right there for Bo Siegel with a couple walks today. So first and second, two outs. Going to bring up Ian Acosta. Ian Acosta, weak pop up to first base, D Martini. Number 22, Ian Acosta. How about his walkout song? So Smash Mouth. Right? Talk about well, early When 2000s. was this? Yeah, like eighth grade or seventh grade? Something around there, middle school. It was way back. You know, I remember the song, Hey Now You're an All Star. That's a classic one from Smash oh, yeah. Mouth. That's, that's their best jam. Yeah, of no course. No doubt. They're actually from the Bay Area. Where? From the San Jose area. Oh, there we go. They, they were established. You know your home very well there, partner. Yeah, my old boss actually grew up with them, so that's the only reason why I knew that. Oh, wow. Metallica, also from the San Jose area. I knew they were because they're always Man, San Francisco. The Giants always have those stupid Metallica. I love Metallica, but I lost a lot of respect for them after they have Giants nights there. How so. about Steve Perry? <laughs> <laughs> you know, great singer from Journey. Don't stop believing. Curveball roped right at 
Nice right play. Right at Tarantino scoops it up, takes the easy way at second base. So Solano strands two, heading to the top of the fifth. And welcome back here. Top of the fifth. They had really, Stosh, it's been all about the pitchers here through the first four. Yeah, you know, it's definitely a pitcher's duel all knotted up at zeros right now with the 9-1-2 hitters coming up for the Mariners. And this one's roped into left field. Going back is Meekum. He makes the grab. Oh, and slams into the fence for out number one. What a play by Josh Meekum. Man, this team defensively, biggest difference this year is how good they are defensively. Last year, a little, little shaky defensively, but man, especially in the outfield. Of course, Joey Dotson, center fielder, great speed. But as you saw there, Josh Mika, man, this kid can ball out and left. But what a swing on the bat by Villafana. I mean, he poked that out there, and that was, ball just kept carrying it him. Did. That's, a short, that's a short fence over there, too. First pitch in there, strike call to Matthew Tarantino, who's 0 for 2 today. Both of his balls have been hit to Rubicaba. And like we say, hit to the shortstop position. You know, you can put that down. It's going to be an out. Yep. And this one's popped up behind the play. Acosta going back. Does he have enough room? And just gets out of play. So count goes 0-2. Sorry, Cam. Couldn't give you a shot there. Man, you know, the way the sky is today, it's a little bit, a little overcast, but not too much. But when that ball goes up, it's hard to see right now. Yeah, as we saw earlier with uh, Jonah's son, he lost that one in foul territory in the bottom of the fourth. So the 0-2 pitch. Oh, oh and this was well. in the left field. That ball is carrying. Meekum's going over. It bounces off the top of wow. the wall and stays in the ballpark. And Solano catches the break right there. Wow. I love like how it just hit the top <laughs> of the fence and came back. Usually you don't see that with these type of fences. Usually you'll see that in MLB parks, obviously, when they've got the a yellow. lot more. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen that, but Solano catches a break there. I thought that was gone right when I, he hit it, too. I did, too, especially that the wind seems to be carrying it that way, which we saw on the ball hit by Villafana. And that now, ball's hit way harder. So a couple hard-hit balls off of Nathan Janest, and Stover's going to go out and have a chat with Sam Morgan at the plate, who's one for two today with a single and a strikeout looking. Why we have a mound meeting, let's do a little station identification. You're tuned in to the Solano College Sports Network. You're home. For Solano Sports, Stosh Moore to Zach Poff here in the broadcast booth. And we want to say thank you guys for watching and tuning in for this excellent BBC matchup here. And Tarantino now with nine extra base hits on the season. That was the seventh double on the year. He was hoping it was going to be a yeah. second home run. He had the home run trot going. You know, I yeah. think if he hustled hard out of the box, he could have found himself Probably on third base. Probably would have been third, yeah. And Tarantino, I mean, leadoff hitter, but... Leads the team with 17 RBIs and showing off that pop there on that last cut. First pitch outside, ball one. And usually you see this a lot with pitchers as you get to the lineup through the third time, they're on to you. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen, I mean, Tarantino there smoked that ball. They're not waiting around. They're seeing a fastball. They're just gripping and ripping. That ball's in the dirt. Good block by Ian Acosta. Like I said, man, if swing at that first pitch, yeah. it might be the best pitch you're going to see. You know, now, like, third time through the lineup, I say, okay, you yeah. see that fastball, you know. Turn now you're coming it. to my side, baby. You know, your first at bat, you really want to see his pitches. Yeah. Second at bat, all right, see what he's going to come at, how he changes. And the third time, you have a pretty good idea on what he's going to throw at you in different counts and whatnot. Inside, and he leaned into that one, but they call it dead. 
And that is a hit by the pitch. And now you got to deal with Ryan Schultz and this kid, 325, one homer, nine RBIs in his last at bat. Hit a double. Now batting. But you know what Janest is hoping for Ryan here? Schultz. A hard hit ground ball right at Lenny or Rubalcaba. You know, I'm, inter I'm interested why the umpires, you know, they gave him the hit by the pitch, but he pretty much leaned into that. He even tried to get out of the way, he ducked his elbow down, but, you know, trying to manufacture runners as, many, as much as you can, I guess. First and second, one out. Good curveball. Strike one. I mean, that's what you got to do right there. Yeah, that's been his bread and butter here through the first four plus. I mean, that curveball has been his moneymaker here. Yeah, Schlatz comes in with nine RBIs on the season six in the Bay Valley Conference play. So he's looking to get number seven and eight possibly here. Ooh. Curveball. Strike two. Back-to-back -back curves. Good job by Nathan Genest. And now here, Nate Genest up 0-2. I think we might see a little uh, high cheese right here maybe. So hard for hitters to lay off that high fastball. Goes outside. Ball one. And that looked like they were, I don't want to say a pitch out, but pretty close to it as they noticed Tarantino. I mean, uh, Sam Morgan. Morgan, big lead over at first base. Yeah, Costa's not afraid to throw the ball around. He's got a good strong arm back behind the plate. Curveball once again just misses wow. low. The count goes two and two. And that's a tough pitch to take right there, but it was a little low. Good take there, Ryan Schultz. I think I've said that about six yeah. different ways now. <laughs> Seven and eight are coming up soon, though. <laughs> so stay tuned. So the 2-2. Two -two. Back pick. Oh, close play, but gets back safely. Good throw there. Good move by Nathan Janest. Yeah, really nice move from Janest. Tarantino heads up play. Knew it was coming. Doesn't have the biggest lead at second base, too, so able to get back in. So you got a, a big gap between short and third right here. Now the curveball ripped right back up the middle. Dotson gets to it quickly. They're going to hold him up at third. So now it's going to be bases loaded with Steven D. Martini coming up. And this will be the second time Janest has had to deal with the bases loaded. Last time, he was able to get out of it with no runs. But this time, only one out. Martini comes in. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. 329 on the season. And he's your four here. This is exactly the yeah. situation you want to have happen right now. You want him to clean up the bases right here. And you got Dominic DeVille on deck, who... Flew out with the bases loaded in his last at bat. This one's shocked play right. ball. Rubicaba, tough play to second, to first. And got they him. got a double play to end the inning. So once again, the Marin Mariners strand, the bases loaded, and we're heading to the bottom of the fifth. Hi, my name is Rebecca LeCount. I'm one of the counselors here at Solano Community College. I'm here to let you know that counselors are available to help you with academic and career advising. Our job is to help you successfully reach your goals. Whether your goal is to obtain a certificate, an associate's degree, or to transfer, it's important to have an educational plan to guide you along the way. We want to make sure that you are taking the classes that you need and not taking ones that won't help you reach your goals. I encourage you to come by the counseling office to see a counselor to develop or update your educational plan as soon as possible. For new students, creating an educational plan is one of the steps that you need to take in order to obtain priority registration. Developing the ed plan will allow you to plan your semester schedule in advance and will give you a better chance to get those classes that you need. You can drop by the counseling office in building 400 on the main campus or call to make an appointment at 707-864-7101. You can also book appointments online at solano.edu. We also have counseling appointments available in Vacaville, Vallejo, and at the Travis Air Force Base. Remember, we're here to help you. Please come by and see us today. Bottom of the fifth, still scoreless here at Billy Luis Yarbrough Stadium. It's been a pitcher's duel today here. We have Briar Litz, the eight hitter coming up followed by the 9-1. So Briar Litz came up and ripped a double in his first stat bat. So let's see if he can stay hot right now and find himself a second hit of the ball game. And he got stranded at third base. They couldn't get him home with one out with Rubicob and Dodson. Way outside, ball one. So I know Rubicaba 
hoping to get another chance with a guy on base. Couldn't cash in the run back in the third inning. And Briar Litz, a guy hoping to fill in that DH role on a more permanent basis. And this one's roped right in the left field. So once again, Briar Litz, a leadoff single. Keeps doing that. He's going to be that permanent DH. Yeah. Two for two. You know, that's the type of production you like to see at the bottom of your lineup. As a yep. hate hitter, has two hits, where Solano has only three hits in the ball game, and Briar Litz has two. Yeah, and especially it's huge when you turn it back to the top of the order to give these guys a chance to bat with guys on base. Because when you got speed, like with Ruba Cobb and Joey D, I mean, you can just make things happen. But Josh Meekum, the number nine hitter, probably would be asked to get the sacrifice bunt down again. Late bunt gets it down. This is a good one. He's got good speed. Throws over to first. High throw. And he gets the foot down. That is a great bunt. Almost beats it out, Josh Meekum. But he gets the job done and gets Briar Litz over to second base with one out. How about the athleticism shown by the first baseman, Steve Demartini there, able to catch that one in foul territory and still able to touch that bag just in time. Now, you know, earlier I was saying who might have the best walk-up song. You know, I'm not Mexican, but I, I do. I, this is my jam right here. I like it. You just kind of get in the mix a little, a little salsa bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the ladies love the salsa. Yeah, so. you know, him and Andres uh, Kirihara, the catcher, you know, they like to have the salsa. Yeah, it's a Cuban song, is that? Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, see, now we got Big Kahuna there messing with us. I don't, who knows? We'll have got, to ask him after the game. It's got a good ring to it, though. Swing and a miss, strike one. That's a rarity to see from Alvaro Ribacaba swinging at something outside the strike zone for the first He pick. He was trying to hit that ball over the scoreboard yeah. right there. I think he thought he was going to get a hanger there. And Nice job, Eric Smith. Get that one in the dirt. So Varro really wants to cash in here, RBI situation. Really try to pick his team up. One swing of the bat can do it. Once again, curveball swing and a miss, strike two. He's just taking his head off of it. Yeah, good job, Eric Smith there. Two back-to-back -back pitches out of the zone. Noticing Alvaro Rupacaba aggressive in this at bat, so why help him out and throw it over the uh, strike zone? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see it on the curveball right here. Yeah. Yeah, just throw the same exact pitch. See if Rubacaba can lay off. Once again, strike three. It's in the dirt. Trouble picking it up. Throws it down to first, and that is out number two. Big time strikeout right there yeah. for Eric Smith. I believe that's the second strikeout on the afternoon. Yeah, it just seems that Alvaro that's Rubacaba has just been fooled by that curveball. Three, three straight curveballs in the dirt. Joey Johnson. Now it brings up Joey Dotson, 0 for 2 today, looking for his first hit. And Solano can really use a hit right here. Once again, runner in scoring position. All knotted up at zeros. One could do it, the way this game's been going. Yeah. Big time situation right here. Runner in scoring position, two outs. Eric Smith comes set. He kicks and fires. Curveball in there, strike call. The count goes 0-1. So that's four straight curveballs from Eric Smith. And just perfectly placed, too. I mean, we saw him with Rubacaba able to get it out of the strike zone, and there you see him right on the outside corner, right at the knees. Joey Dodson, the reigning NorCal player of the player of the week, first Falcon ever. Seeing if he can stay hot. Squares right up, pulls it back. That's ball one in the dirt. Joey Dodson getting hot at the right time. Now up to 258, nine RBIs. But what I've been most impressed with Joey Dodson with is his glove in center field and the range he has out there. Joey Wills Dotson. And the 1-1. One, one. Trying to drop it down. Pulls it back. Ball two. Count goes to 2-1. So Dotson has a lot of speed. Maybe he's trying to bunt his way on. The base is here. You know, Briar's out there. He's like, hey, come on, guys. Get <laughs> right? me in. He's like, I don't want to get stranded twice. That's a good hitter's count now, two and one. Yeah, you want to look for something you can really drive into the gap. And there it is. Hit right to the second baseman, Villafana. He picks it up, throws it over to first for out number three. So Solano strands one, heading to the top of the sixth. Hello, my name is Eric Visser. I'm the Director of Athletics of Solano College Athletics. I want to congratulate our student athletes, our coaches, our staff, 
and especially our fans for another outstanding season of Solano College Athletics. Top of the sixth inning. Nathan Jeunesse coming out for a sixth Nathan inning of work. Day. He has a five, six, seven hitters coming up. Dominic DeVille, one for two today. Roped the double back in the second inning. Hopped on an inside fastball. Then flew out to the left fielder in his second at bat. First pitch in there. Strike call. The count goes 0-1. And that second at bat came with the bases loaded. And the Mariners have had the bases loaded twice. Mm -hmm. And no runs to show for. How about that five, four, uh, six four three double play? Strike two. And we were talking about this during the break, and uh, Rubicaba, man, just did a good job, got it out of his glove quick. Yeah. And also a good stretch over there by Grandpa, big Bo Siegel. Outside, ball one, yeah. Got a good stretch out there, and they just got him, you know. The Steve, Steven D. Martini. This one's popped up in shallow right field. Evans coming in, making the long run. He's under it. He makes the grab for out number one. Getting his little. Who's, uh, whose camera shot is that? Is that Jake? A little I think shaky. That's, I think that's uh, Chelsea Williams. Oh, it was a really good shot. Yeah, I was just joking. Jonah Sun. So Jonah Sun coming up to the plate now. 0 for 1 today. Ground out to the shortstop and also has a walk. So Janess needs a quick inning here. First pitch in there, strike call, the count goes 0-1. I love to see this from Janess right now. He's getting in later, and he's really fine-tuning, hitting his spots, and just seems like he keeps going and keeps going, getting out of these jams, too. Oh, and this one's roped right through the three-and-a-half hole, and that is going to get down for a base hit. Yeah, the thing I love most with Janess, though, is he's not falling in love with one pitch. He's done a good job of going back fastball, curveball, fastball, curveball, and trying to keep hitters off balance, but... It <laughs> didn't work right there against Jonah's yeah. son, who's all over that one and smoked it to right for a one-out single. So here comes Coach Dover. I believe we're going to have a pitching change with James Potts coming up to the plate. You know, he ate up a lot of innings today for the Falcons. So a great outing by Nathan Genest. And you know, he's got to be a little ticked off. The pitchers love to factor in as get that win. So, at best, he'll get a no decision. But, man, straight zeros through five for Nate Genest. And uh, get a look at the new pitcher for Coach Dover, Peyton Tyler, the five foot eight, 155 pound sophomore, the lefty out of Rio Vista High School. And Peyton Taylor has been stellar in his seven previous appearances. One and one record, ERA at a sexy 1.80, 15 innings, 18 strikeouts, only five walks. A final stat line here from Nathan Janess. He went five and a third. Gave up two walks, two strikeouts, five hits, no runs, no earned runs. He does have a runner on, so that could possibly change, but that's the way it's in the book right now. And like I said, Peyton Tyler, the lefty, he got some gas in his arm right yeah. there, and he's got a good curveball, so it's going to be interesting to see with James Potts coming up. He's a left-handed hitter, so a lefty-lefty matchup with a runner on first. Maybe try to get him roll over or something, do a double, double play and get out of the inning. Yeah, and two, it's, it's got to be nice, too. You had Janesco, the whole five and a third, and now you switch it up and you bring in a lefty, so now the hitter's got to adapt to that. And, man, I've been talking about this all year. 
Solano's bullpen is the reason why they're 6-0 and in conference play. Their bullpen has been, I believe, their best attribute to this team so far in the year. As we saw last year in baseball, how important is the bullpen? Yep. Ask the San Francisco Giants and the Kansas City yep. Royals. Without the Royals' bullpen, I don't think they would be yeah. in that World Series game, especially the wild card game against the A's. They exactly. threw out all their stops. And both our teams, yep. what, what was one of our biggest issues? Bullpen. Bullpen. Back end, yep. If you don't have a good bullpen, you're not going to do anything. I still blame John Lesser for the loss. Didn't, he didn't try to pick over yeah. once. Eight stolen bases? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And I mean, if you're a lefty. So we have a pinch runner coming in. It's going to be Chris Heyman, number five. And Heyman, I mean, he's really one of their best players, to too. So obviously he's going to stay in the game. Heyman, and Tyler. The kid's only batting, what, 408? <laughs> but on the bases, one for one. Stolen bases. Yeah, Chris Heyman comes in a 408 average, you know. He leads the team in hits with 20 hits so far on the season. He's like, Coach, I thought I was getting a day off. <laughs> Trying to drop down the bunt. Pitch is in there. Strike call. The count goes 0-1. So good pitch there by Peyton Tyler. That's something you want to see when a guy comes out of bullpen just come in throwing strikes. Yeah. So Jonah Sun finishes this one. One for two. Reach base safely twice with the walk. Now x out as Heyman now taking his spot. Good curveball, strike two. Whew. That thing hung, 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 and then bit right at the end, pulling the string out there. That was like uh, your old guy who just signed a minor league deal with you guys once again right there. Larry Zito. Yes, sir. Former Cy Young Award winner, 2002. Outside, ball one. Then he got paid and decided, hey, let's get an ERA plus five. <laughs> Did help the Giants win a World Series, though, played a vital role in that one, won that game. Game, I believe it was game, game five. Six. Game five. They were, up yeah. th they were down 3-1, won that one, got it back to the Bay. Rest is history. Pick over, got him leaning. Ooh. Oh, looked like Bo Siegel's glove might have got stuck a little bit in the dirt there, a little slow, trying to get the tag. Not the best throw either. Yeah, a little bit off. You know, if that throws around right the money, yeah. he has him all day. Caught him leaning. You know, it's hard coming off the bench. You know, Chris Heyman has been playing this game. You come out and you have a lefty on the mound, you know. Still, you know, trying to wake up a little bit, get involved in the game. Yeah, that stanky leg over there just <laughs> got caught in the ground. Oh, this one's poked down the left field line. It's going to go out of play. Foul. And you got to tip your cap right there to Potts. Just a good job to get a piece. Yeah, he just flicked, it. He just flicked his hands and just trying to stay alive. That was a good curveball from Peyton Tyler. Yeah, Janest and now Tyler. I mean, the curveball has been working for both these guys. So the one, two, checking over. That was a slow move there. Something I like to see that throw back from Bo to Peyton. You see Garland Webster coming to back up. That's and you don't see baseball. that too often, too. The game's changed. Yeah, coming down to six innings, still scoreless. Every run counts at this point of the ball game. Good curveball, just a bit high, ball wow. two. And that's one thing Marquez has not really been giving that high strike call so far in this one. You got to love it, though. Matthew Marquez, very consistent with his strike zone here today, and that's all you can ask for if you're a pitcher. Exactly. Consistency. Call it both ways, it's all good. Curveball, ooh. Saying it hit him. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, and he, it worked. Oh, and they call it. was hit by the pitch, and Stover's going to come out and talk to the umpire. I'm not too sure about that call. It didn't hit him. I, you know, I, I'm going to disagree with you along with uh, the old man running the board. I believe that did get his sleeve right there. But I don't, I don't think he's made enough effort to get out of the way. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that. So that's two hit by the pitches, or batsmen hit for the Murray Mariners. And both of them seem to be leaning. So They must have a good debate program at Marin, though, because <laughs> he was very persuasive in his argument right. there. And boom, first base. So now one out, first and second. You got Richard Harada coming up to play. He's 0 for 2 today with a fly out and a ground out to the short stop. Squaring around a bunt. Can't get it down. Outside, ball one. And it seems like each inning, Marin's getting guys on the bases. In the second inning, they stranded two, third, and fifth. They had the bases loaded, didn't score a run. And now they got two runners on here in the sixth with one out. Yeah, they have eight total stranded base runners out on the base pass today. 
So they're looking for that big hit to crack it open. Curve outside, ball two. So Peyton's really going to have to come in, throw a strike here, you know, something low, and get a ground ball, double play, and get out of the inning. Yeah, if you're Peyton right here, you want to get out of this inning and find a way to get Gerarda and Villafana out if it gets to him. You don't want this to go back to the top of the order this inning. So now it's 3-0. and Acosta's going to go out and talk to Tyler, Peyton Tyler. As you see, Chris Rost. Well, actually, I, I saw it. I guess you guys didn't see it watching on the monitor, but he's going to grab his glove. He's going to go get juiced up. And Chris Rost came out of the bullpen last week and uh, did a pretty good job through a couple innings. Gave up one unearned run, I believe. And that was that walk-off win against Yuba back on the last day of February. So 3-0 to count to Herrera. Squares around the bunt. Comes right down the middle. Strike one. And that so, just shows you he's got more confidence in his off-speed than his fastball mm -hmm. there. 3-0 count. So get me over strike. You know, that's one of those maybe you bump that down. You know, get the, get the job done, advance the runners. I mean, get the 90 feet you might need to get one on the board. Coming back. He lofts this one up in the infield. Infield fly. Should be the call right here. Yep. They do call the infield fly, and Lenny grabs it for out number two. Big time out right there from Peyton Tyler. And man, you just got to battle. You're down 3 0. Mm -hmm. And get a strike, and then you get a weak pop up. And you got to get this out right here. You, you don't want this to go to the top of the order, especially we saw Tarantino was an inch away from a home run his last at bat. Yeah, Villafana, I mean, he was pretty close himself. Josh Miko made a great catch yeah. out in left field, and he gave it a ride, so he shows he has some pop. But that was also off Nathan Jeunesse, now a new pitcher, Peyton Tyler. Fastball low and inside, ball one. So need to get this guy here. Like you said, you do not want the big boys on the top of the lineup coming up right now in this situation. Swing and a miss, strike one. He just got a ton of confidence in that curveball. And that's his go-to pitch. Yeah, definitely, you know, sped up his bat there. Now come back with a fastball. I mean, he set himself up perfectly here in a 1-1 count. Curveball poked over the head of Rubicaba. Mika picking him. it up. They're waving him home. Strong throw, but he's in there safely. Marin takes the lead, one to nothing. And right there, that's where you'd like it if your corner outfielder could just find a way to get that one all the way to a home plate. Just not enough time for the cutoff there by Garland Webster. So first run on the board, man, the number nine hitter cashing in. And now it brings up Matthew Tarantino. As we said, he's one for three today with that long double hit off the top of the fence. I think he hit it exactly 330. I think so. <laughs> I, that's a good guess right there. And I uh, can tell you, Tyler's hoping he doesn't hit a 330 right here. Yeah. First pitch right at Rubicaba. He scoops it, flips it over to second for out number three. So Marin cracks the scoreboard open. One, nothing, heading to the bottom of the sixth.
bottom of the sixth inning. The three, four, five hitters coming up. Josh Lane stepping up to the plate. He's one for two today. Singled in his last at bat. So now Marin is leading one to nothing. So Solano's going to have to get the bats hot right now with Eric Smith coming out in his sixth inning of work. First pitch, Lenny's low, ball one. Oh, and the, they appealed it, and the first base umpire said, yes, he did go around. So the count goes 0-1. Home crowd isn't too happy about that call. Strike on the outside corner. The count goes 0-2. So Smith has Lenny in the hole quickly. Oh, and two has a lot of pitches to work with. To be, let's see what he comes with here. Curveball, hit right to Tarantino on the run. Makes a good throw. Just beats Lenny out for out number one. Now it's going to bring up Garland Webster. Who's 0 for two today? Grounded into a fielder's choice in his last at bat. He hit a hot shot to the second baseman Jeff Villafana. Villafana made a good diving play. They almost got a double play out of it, but Garland's too fast to allow that to happen here. So let's see if Garland can start the hit and rally here for the Falcons. First pitch, fastball called strike. Count goes 0 1. Yeah, Garland batting a 4 0 9 in conference play so far. Having himself a great freshman campaign. Outside, ball one. Outfield playing normal depth. Maybe shade a little in, the wind swirling. High and outside, ball two. It's hoping to come back and it'd be 1-1. Uh, <laughs> So the 2-1, Smith taking a long time. Now he's ready to go. He rocks and fires. And this one's hitting the right center field. Going over Sam Morgan. Morgan's camped under it. He makes the grab for out number two. So Webster now 0 for 3. Darian Evans coming up 0 for 2. Two strikeouts. Right fielder, number 28, Darian Evans. Yeah. Last at bat battled. Just couldn't get over that hump, you know. Hasn't quite figured out Eric Smith. Eric Smith's had his number all game long. And not many Falcons outside of Briar Litz have figured out Eric Smith. And that curveball was high, but it was called a strike. I believe curved in there. So the 0 1. And this one's ripped right in the three and a half hole. So Darian Evans has himself a two out single. And right there, that's the spot Darian Evans, perfect style for him to come up. Nobody on, two outs. It allows him to be aggressive at the dish. Doesn't have to worry about getting the bunt down or anything like that. And when Darian Evans is aggressive like that, there's a reason why he's been playing so well in conference play. He's finally aggressive and doing a good job that time going the other way. Yeah, Darian wasn't waiting around. He saw a pitch he liked and just went with it. And he was, that was a good piece of hitting, especially now with Bo Siegel up, two outs. And Bo likes the... Use that three and a half hole. Low and outside, ball one. And a big hole over there, obviously, with the first baseman holding on Darian Evans. So it's got to be a nice thing to see for a left-handed hitter. Yeah, you know, if Eric Smith's smart, he's been trying to pitch him away, trying yeah. to get him to roll over mm -hmm. on something, don't let him make a good contact. And that pitch called a strike down at the ankles. So the count goes to one one. The home crowd is not liking this. It's inning. They're getting pretty frustrated here at Billy Louise Yarborough Stadium. Yeah. I mean, I'd stay out of those. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want the Solano fan base coming after me. So, I mean, it's that strike zone's been there all day. Oh, Bo swings at a high fastball. Popped up in the infield. This could be trouble. Two Marin Mariners under it. And Tarantino makes the grab for out number three. So Solano strands one, heading to the top of the seventh. My name is Jesse Branch. 
We want to thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. So top of the seventh inning, Marin leads you one. You know, I, I look a lot better with the pole in front of my face. So, <laughs> just saying. Right there. Oh, yeah, you got a good little shot of us there. Morgan. So Sam Morgan, Ryan Schultz, and Steve Martini do up in this inning. First pitch to Morgan is low for ball one. Peyton Tyler out here for his second inning of work. Trying to eat up some innings for this bullpen. Good pitch in there. Strike called. The count goes to one and one. You know, Solano just hasn't been able to manufacture like that rally that we're used to seeing from them. Good curveball, and just a bit outside. The count goes to 2-1. and Yeah, so far the story of this game has been Eric Smith. I yeah. mean, the way he's been pitching for Marin, Solano really hasn't done much at the dish. Swing and a miss strike to the high cheddar. Got him swinging. And with Solano, too, I mean, pitching, they've been getting out of jams, and they're keeping them in this game. Yeah, Marin had a couple great opportunities to just blow the game open. Base is loaded twice. Strike three call. Got him looking. Now, now the Solano crowd starting to get back on Marquez's <laughs> good side now after they get the strike call. That outside part of the strike zone has been there all day, though. In the previous inning, you had a low strike, and then you had a, mm -hmm. a high strike, too. Those haven't really been called much. So, Yeah, so Ryan Schultz coming up to the plate now. He's two for three today with a double and a single. First pitch high and outside, ball one. Just released it a tad early there by Peyton Tyler. Yeah, Schultz having a pretty good game, two for three. A double and a single. This was fell back right into the dugout. And what a catch over there by Stephen Martini. He made that look way too easy. He's even got a smile on his face. I can't believe I caught that. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's saving he's, the coaches that are sitting down over he's there. He's hoping we got it on camera. Oh, good curveball in there. Strike call. The count goes to one and two. Hey, he's like, where's my nut and nut? Nut and nut. Yeah, right. We've had a few here today. Yeah. Rubacaba, and then the play that. Swing and a miss. Strike three. It's dropped. So Acosta's going to flip it down to first for out number two. Back to back strikeouts for Peyton Tyler. Yeah, he's starting to feel it a bit now, and it's Stephen Martini coming up 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and grounded into a double play with a walk. And don't worry, Number Jeff Villafana, your play Stephen at second DMR earlier in this one was also SC Top 10 worthy. SCSN Top 10 worthy. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. We're going to get a, a, like a or like kind of mix to it or a little music. What's our ringtone going to be? We're still working on that. Okay. Yeah. Next week we'll figure it out? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Good curveball in there. Quick 0-2 count. Man, that curveball is dirty. Peyton Tyler's starting to feel it now. This kid, man, he chews his gum angrily, though, I noticed. Look at him. He's just in the zone, going, boom. Come strike three, cold. And Peyton Tyler strikes out the side, and we're heading to the bottom of the seventh. Time to stretch, folks.
Hi, I'm Neil Glines, the Dean of the School of Liberal Arts, and I want to thank you for watching Solano College Sports Network. Bottom of the seventh inning is seven, eight, nine. Hitters coming up for Solano, and we have a new pitcher on the mound for the Murray Mariners, Cooper Cassad. He comes into this game batting, uh, sorry, 338. <laughs> He's batting ERA. 338, baby. You know, final stat line for Eric Smith, who was outstanding today. Six inning pitch, two walks, three strikeouts, four hits, and no earned runs allowed. Yeah, that big fat zero, impressive, and he was just in control of the whole game. And Cooper Cassad, a guy they use a lot coming out of the bullpen. 12, making his 13th appearance now. First pitch. Strike call. The count goes 0-1 to Ian Acosta, who's 0-2 for 2 today. Now, this is the time for the Falcons. You know, you got Eric Smith, who was pretty much unhittable out there today for the Falcons. You know, now it's time to crack into the bullpen and grip it and rip it and just start hitting. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Kind of half-hearted swing there. Had him fooled. And this guy's throwing some cheddar. Yeah, I mean, Eric Smith had a little bit of velocity, but now you bring in Kassan, this guy, definitely the hardest thrower we've seen here today. Fourth pitcher we've seen. Low and outside, ball one. And if you're Solano here in this inning, you want to find a way to get a guy on, maybe a couple guys, and get it back to the top of the order with Rubacaba and Dotson, and then hopefully get a chance with Lenny. Well, this one's popped up in the center field. Potts is under it, calls it, makes the grab for out number one. So Acosta now 0 for 3. Briar Litz, the DH coming up. He's, 2 he's, for 2. He's mad Eric Smith's out of the game. Because yeah. he was really the only one that was really seeing Smith well. So let's see if Brian, Briar Litz can stay hot right here. Outside, ball 1. So good take there by Briar. And you're hearing a lot of life from the Solano's dugout right now. They know they're in this game. They're hooting and hollering. And that's what you need, especially. They're used to coming back. Yeah. High ball two. Yeah, Saturday's been the theme for walk-off wins for Solano. They had the walk-off win against Yuba, 5-4 win. And they also had a 3-2 win against Santa Rosa. Swing and fouled back right into the catcher's glove. Count goes 2-1. So Cooper Cassad, the kid from Summerfield High School, doing a really good job out there, throwing heat. Summerfield High School, I believe, out in the Santa Rosa area. And this one's hit, backhanded by Villafana. He throws it over to first route number two. So Cassad starting off right where Eric Smith left off. Two up, two down quickly. Left fielder, number 26. And that's Josh the first time Pinkett. Mr. Litz has been retired. So uh, Stover having a chat with Marquez. Looks like it's going to be yep, Alex Nesikevich coming up to the plate now. And he was the hero in that Yuba game. Had the walk-off hit. Just a little grounder to short. Yeah, let's see if he can get on here. We know Nesikevich has a lot of speed. You know, he plays all over the outfield. If he gets on and Rubikawa comes up with a big hit, we can see him get one in. First pitch in there. Strike call. The count goes 0-1, oh, you know. I think Stover made the move for a left, you know, lefty-righty matchup. Yeah, a lot of depth for Stover here. He can do this a lot. Pinch hit late in games. Low and inside, ball one. And that's Kevin, a guy, a good, very patient, doesn't swing at many pitches out of the zone. Just a, a really a smart ball player. And if it wasn't for Joey Dotson, he'd probably be the fastest guy yeah. on the team. And this one's lifted out of play over the third base dugout where JT Blaze is up there. He looks like he's just hanging out right now. Yeah, what's going on? He's not working over there. <laughs> so the count one and two to Nesikevich. Come on, man. And this one's hit right to Villafana. He picks it up, lobs it over to first for out number three. So three up, three down, and we're heading to the top of the eighth.
Top of the eighth inning, Wren still leading one and nothing with the six, seven, eight hitters coming up. And eight. off is Dominic DeVille. Dominic the fans DeVille. might have missed the best uh, duet ever there. Oh, yeah, a little Neil Diamond, yeah, Sweet yeah, Caroline. You never go wrong with Sweet Caroline. Known at Fenway Park. You know, they played here in the eighth inning. First pitch in there, strike call. The count goes 0-1. Oh, uh, man, I'm really impressed with Peyton Tyler right here. He's just coming right after these hitters, getting the head. Throwing that strike. First pitch strike, yep. Swing and a miss, strike two. The count goes 0-2. Oh, in this game, we've seen how important it is for pitchers to get that first strike, stay ahead of hitters. I mean, there's a reason why it's a one nothing game. Mm -hmm. I mean, pitchers have been in control, Peyton, throwing strikes. Just a bit outside. The count goes a one and two. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I, I I thought that was a ball, that's but this, that strike's been called all pretty much all game. Swing and a miss, strike three. In the dirt, lobbed first, and that completes the strikeout for out number one. Man, how about Peyton Tyler coming out of the pen? I believe that's his third strikeout already. Fourth, fourth. in a row. Fourth in a row. See, that's why I need to fill out my stat sheet. I didn't have it filled out, and I knew he struck out the first two in the seventh. So now it's going to bring up Chris Heyman. Chris this yeah. is his first at bat of the game. Like I said, Chris Heyman leads the team with he a might be 408 best average, 482 on base, 510 slugging. Yeah, first hey. pitch, and nope. Timeout call, Heyman. A little bit of late timeout, but that's a smart thing by Peyton Tyler. You know, just go through the motion. There's so many injuries yeah, that happen exactly. when pitchers start and they stop. This was popped straight up. I got it. I Could got be it. Playable. And goes out of out of play. So the count goes 0-1. Once again, getting ahead of the hitters. Man, I love Peyton Tyler though. I mean, this kid, talk about intensity on the mound. He's got that bulldog. Kind of like a Jake Peavy. Yeah. A good good comparison there. It's coming out, you know. I don't like you comparing guys to Giants, but I'll let this one slide. Yeah, he was a Padre for a long time. That's Peavy I'm talking about. There you go. Red Sox maybe, too? Yeah, maybe, series. Let me a little Grant Balfour. Uh, Grand Ball for so overrated. <laughs> yeah. I love the Rage Nazi. Try to drop down the bunt, making him feel his position. Tyler picks it up, bare hands, throws it first. And he's safe at first, so Heyman getting himself a bunt single. And that just shows you the versatility for Mr. Heyman. This guy's batting 408, and next thing you know, he's going to sneak in a bunt single. You know, I really like that play, actually, by Chris Heyman. You, you got <laughs> Peyton Tyler retired four straight hitters on strikeouts, you know? Okay, nice swing. Let's just drop it down. Make him feel his position. Kind of caught everybody off guard. And he finds himself over at first base. One out with James Potts up, up at the plate. He had that uh, hit by the pitch that ticked his shoulder. Or his, <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that up. Just barely ticked it. You know, like from the bench warmers. I ticked it. I ticked it. <laughs> <laughs> now we get a chance to see uh, Tyler pitching out of the stretch. Yeah, you know, Chris Heyman actually scored that that go ahead run back in the sixth inning. So he has some wheels. Quick throw. Ooh, a fake throw. Got he faked you. Yeah, he got, got you. Yeah. Got he. Got him. <laughs> Curveball outside, ball two. And right here, you know he's hoping for a hard hit ground ball to Rubicaba or Lenny. See if they can turn another double play. Now, if you told me that, I want to go buy that shirt. The six, the four, six, yeah. three equals two. Yeah, I showed it to my friend. She had no idea because the math is wrong. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's not. It's perfect. <laughs> that pitch in there, strike call. The count goes two and one. And as a hitter, there's nothing you can do there. It's just a perfect 2 0 pitch. You see a good shot there. Chris Rost warming up in the bullpen. You know, he'll come on to pitch the ninth. And he was really the guy everyone thought was going to be their best pitcher this mm -hmm. year. Runner on the move, curveball hit and run, fouled back. So now the count will go to two and two. Man, this game just flew by. Yeah. It's already the eighth inning and it's not even three o'clock. I just hit three o'clock. So two hours into the ball game, one nothing. I mean, kind of the game we expected here. Yeah, pitcher's duel, good defense. Runner on the move again, hit and run. Hit out to left center field. The ball was tailing. Makes the grab by Nesikevich. And Heyman's going to have to hustle back. Oh, that could have been a close play, but smart by not throwing it and not risking him at a free 90 feet. So that's I'm, the second out of the inning. I'm just glad you didn't fall for another pump fake right there. <laughs> you only get me about once again. 
And you know how it is when a guy checks in as Kevich now and left, you're going to at least see one ball hit your way in that inning. Catcher, Richard Harada. So it, huge right here for Tyler to get out of this inning. Only one runner on at first base with two down. Yeah, Richard Harada coming up to the plate now. He's 0 for 3 today, running on first two outs. And Peyton Tyler would like to end his day by walking into the dugout by getting a third out right here. Fastball just misses outside. Ball one. It looked like he wanted to call it, but they didn't call it. Yeah, and I mean, Matt Marquez has been calling that all day, too. Yeah, I think right after I said he's been very consistent <laughs> this whole game, he's just, ah, sorry, kid. <laughs> that pitch in there, strike called. And now we're seeing that low strike called a lot more. Yeah, you know, that was a good use of the changeup there. It really bit at the end, but it crossed where the knees are, and that is part of the strike zone, so... Good job by Marquez there by recognizing that. And there's almost nothing you can do as a hitter except get on top of it, maybe foul it straight back. And this one's kind of checks one right to Garland. He makes the grab for out number three. So the Mariners strand one, and we're heading to the bottom of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth inning, the one, two, three hitters coming up for Solano, and they have six outs to work with. You know, with Cooper Cassad out on the mound, throwing some Ched. It's really gonna have to start right here with Alvaro Rubicola if they want to muster up comeback. Yeah, this is a, in my opinion, this is the biggest situation in the game for the Falcons, because if Rubicola gets on base, you don't even have to bunt him over. He's a guy that can go ahead and steal a bag, and then you can get the bunt down, and next thing you know, he's at third base with one out. Uh, he's 0 for 3 today. He's hungry he's for a hit. He's due. He's due, baby. He's due. Outside, ball one. Now, I remember earlier when I said he might be my favorite shortstop to watch, I didn't know Bubba Johnson was sitting right behind <laughs> us. So we're going to find out, though, who's right between me and the old man behind me. Count goes 2 0. Definitely, if you're. See, I, I can't make a call because I played with Bubba. Bubba's and your I boy. Against him. He's I've, your boy. I've watched him a long time. And Alvaro, I mean, it's a tie for me. I'd say that. Oh, come on. Who's a tie? <laughs> There's no tying in yeah. baseball. Oh, hit right up the middle. And Alvaro Rubicaba has a leadoff single. Big time. This kid's clutch. You need somebody to step up, make a play. Alvaro's your guy. Now Joey Dodson's like 0 for, 0 for 3. He's due, too. He's due for a bunt. Yeah. <laughs> Number three. Uh, right here, though, I've, we know. saw this against Yuba. Rubicaba got on. Stover let Dodson take the pitch. Rubicaba took off, stole second base. So we we'll haven't see. seen any steal attempts so far yeah. today on uh, Richard Herrera. And Rubicaba, 13 out of 17 this year. This is a clean game. We have not seen an error at all yeah. this game. He gets it bunt down perfectly. Dodson speedy. Can he beat it out? Oh, it just gets him. Good throw there by Ryan Schultz. Did his job. Yes, he did. Now it's going to bring up Josh Lenny. One for three today. The RBI leader for the Solano Falcons. And this is the situation you want. You got the tie and run, Second scoring base. position, one out. Boom. You got Lenny and Garland Webster coming up. You're three, four guys. And these guys have been cashing in all season long. And Stover's hoping they're going to do it again right here in the bottom of the eighth. Man, I really thought Joey Dawson was going to beat that out. I could that tell. Was a good, strong throw. Yeah, I've been impressed with uh, Mr. Schultz there at third base. Made a couple of nice plays yeah. in this one. 
like you said, partner, it's been a great defensive game. Hi, ball one. Yeah, clean all the way around. You know, it's like just two very good teams going right at it. There's a reason why. 6-0 and and 5-1 and one yeah. in the BBC. Winner of this game will be all alone and well, obviously not all alone in first place. <laughs> Murray would be six and one, and Slon would be six and one. Strike on the outside corner. Count goes one to one. But yeah, we're really seeing the two best teams, I believe, in the Bay Valley Conference. And it, you just talk about the turnaround Stover's had from last year to this year's yeah. team. I mean, huge, huge improvements. Last year was just one of those off years. It happens in baseball. Baseball's that one sport, really, you, it's so unpredictable. That's why I love it. So right here, if you're Lenny, you got to be very aggressive here. You got a big hole between first and second with the Huge second hole. baseman holding Rubicaba pretty close to the bag. So and Cooper could saw it actually that last pitch. I think he crossed up Herrera behind the plate because that's why they went out and had the little mound meeting, stepping off there. So they're not on the same page with the runner on second base. You know they're probably going second, third sign in there. So just getting on the same page here. So a one-one pitch, runner on the move. In the dirt, and he's in there safely. Keeps the toe on the bag. What a time to steal a bag. Alvaro Rubicaba doing it all. So smart. I mean, he just read Cooper Cassad like a book, and he stole that bag easy. I knew yeah. right when he took off, he was going to be in easily. Hey, I'm glad he didn't pull UNSS, but it's an overslide the bag. All right. He kept the toe <laughs> on there. Man, so that was big time. 14 stolen bags now for the best player in Northern California. Two and one the count. Lenny just needs to find something, get something in the outfield. Got to get this running with one out. That just shows you how dangerous Rubicaba is, though. He's got a single. Now there's only one out, and all of a sudden he's on third base. Great speed. This one's hit right Tiger. past the three and a half hole. Rubicaba's going to come in to score. And Solano's RBI leader, Josh Lenny, adds one more to his total as we are tied at one. I mean, hey, let little John do the talking, baby. Turn down for what? This team is clutch, man. Josh Lanny coming up. I, you know, I might be a freshman, yeah. but hey, coach, I got this. Rubicaba, man, though. Single, gets over yep. to second with the bunt, and just heads up play, read the pitcher, stole third. third Lanny's like, I got you, baby. Yeah, it seems that uh, Kassad kind of struggles out of the stretch. Lanny just gets back. Good move there by Kassad. I mean, what a dive, though, by Jeff Villafana. He yeah. almost had it. Yeah. it. I think it ticked his glove. Yeah, and we saw him make a play like that earlier, one yeah. he got and almost turned two. So now Garland Webster. Prime time. 0 for 3. Ooh. Oh, got him. Oh, and they got him at first. Man. I, you know, I wish I had a better view. Uh, yeah, I thought he was, I All thought right. he got his hand in safely, but. I tell you, though, Lenny's happy that Stover does coach third base. <laughs> Doesn't have to deal with him in the dugout right now. He will after the game, though. Oh, it almost hits his bat. That would have been a foul ball. So throwing a little chin music up over that curveball ball just slipped out of hey, his when you see, Yeah, when you see uh, something coming at your face, it's a lot better when it's a curveball or change up, not a high heater, especially from this guy. And this one's chopped right to Villafana. He scoops it up. Throws it over to first for out number three. The damage is done. We're all tied up at ones, heading to the top of the ninth.
Adam Coates, baby, checking in for Stover, third pitcher used. And uh, I was telling you this, I believe this is Solano's best pitcher yeah. right here coming in for the ninth inning, all tied up 1 1. I'm very impressed. A little bit of sidewinder. You know, yeah. he makes some matches. His pitching does an excellent job. And he, he shows no emotion on the yeah. mound. And he's good. up there and he's just stone faced, ready to throw the ball. Final stat line for Peyton Tyler no walks, four strikeouts, two hits, no runs, no earned runs, and two and two thirds, cleaning up the mess for. The the scoring. Yeah, did a good job to just allow that one run. Got out of that jam. Adam? And what, he had that streak of four straight four strikeouts? Straight. Yeah, and two of them happened to be looking, too. So yeah. that's that's Jeff pretty impressive Villafana. right there. Now you got to deal with Coatsy. So now Jeff Villafana up at the plate, one for three today with a single in his last at bat. And we got the top of the lineup coming up after him. First pitch in there, strike call to so the count goes 0 oh, 1. Yeah, huge at bat right here. You, you don't want anybody on base. When it goes back to the top of the order, be nice to get one out with Tarantino coming up. Good Nasty. pitch, strike two. What do you do if you're a hitter there? <laughs> Just hope and pray it's a ball? <laughs> Looks like a little bit of a two seam coming back. It's so dirty. So the 0-2. Strike three. Swing and a miss and blew it by him. That's, a man, you see that pitch on the 0-1 nasty and then you come back with that cheese right there yeah not batting shortstop man i'm telling you man adam coat this kid is the real deal he's nice yeah very nice to have at the back end of your bullpen i mean coming from peyton tyler to adam coats that's a pretty good matchup right there now matthew tarantino played one for four hit that long double literally hit off the top of the fence oh this one's hit out the center field it's going back joey dotson is under it makes the grab for out number two he just hit that one to the wrong part of the field. <laughs> you got to be a big boy if you're going to yeah. clear that 400-foot sign over there. Yeah, you got to be a Victor Romero. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm just glad we didn't have that same camera guy we had at the softball <laughs> game last year, DJ. <laughs> that kid just – I mean, this would be a bigger jump, obviously, oh, yeah. than the softball one. but That's pretty. That's pretty far, far down, two stories. Yeah, probably. yeah, I wouldn't – it would probably break something if that happens. So Sam Morgan up at the plate. First pitch to him is a strike called on the outside corner. But big time right here for Coatsy. I mean, Solano just tied it up, bottom of the eighth. Keep momentum on your side. He's retired the first two in order, trying to make it a one, two, three, ninth. Oh, this one's fouled back, and it hits off Acosta. He's all good. She gets a little nod, so now the count is 0 oh and 2. Catchers like bruises. Yeah. Makes them feel alive. Exactly. <laughs> you got to get dinged up a little bit. Swing and a miss, strike three. Too so easy. Adam Coates retires him down in order, and we're heading to the bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth. It is crunch time, folks. All tied up at one. You see the Bay Valley Conference standing there. Solano Huge at game, six baby. and zero. Marin at five and one. We have Darian Evans, Bo Siegel, Ian Acosta coming up. New pitcher on the mound for the Marin Mariners. It's the third baseman who was a third baseman now. The pitcher Ryan Schultz on the mound. Final stat line for Cooper Cassad: two innings pitched, no walks, no strikeouts, two hits, one run, one earned run. And this guy has a little bit of cheddar. And now over at third base, Chris Heyman. Yeah, Schlatz comes in. He has a, he has no ERA in five appearances and seven and a third inning pitched. Nine strikeouts, one walk. 
opponent's batting average in their 200. Hasn't allowed a home run. Hasn't even allowed a run at that. So this is going to be interesting to see what happens here in the bottom of the ninth at Billy and Luigi Yarborough Stadium. Once again, you're tuned in to the Solano College Sports Network. Stosh Smoyd and Zach Poff, your home for Solano Sports. What a game we have on our hands today. Hey, all I'm going to say is the last two Saturday games I've done here, walk-off wins. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just throwing it out there. Is it going to be three in a row? Your boy Darian Evans coming up to the dish and uh, this is uh, this is a perfect spot for Darren Evans right here you get to come up set the tone here in the bottom of the ninth and his last at bat he hit a nice hard ball opposite way right past the first baseman for his first hit of the game yeah, one for three the couple strikeouts you know I bet you he's extremely happy Eric Smith's not in the game anymore yeah so here we go first pitch coming from Ryan Schultz Curve ball, inside ball one. And he even looked at the umpire. It's like, please don't call it. <laughs> He's like, yes. But Darian Evans, of course, he has he has pop. He can end this in one swing. Ooh, that strike on the outside corner. Count goes to one and one, you know. But you can't be thinking about the long ball. You got to be thinking uh, about just good get on swing. base. We need base runners. Because exactly. you know if he gets on base, Grandpa's going to bunt him over. Oh, thought about it. Good, good hold. Check. That's hard pitch to lay off, yeah. that high fastball. I mean, he didn't, he held it there, too, right? With his check swing, he's like, no, I didn't even get close. So 2-1 count, perfect hitter's count here. You're looking for something he can drive. Oh, there it was. <laughs> Swung at that one, kind of golfed it. Foul, count goes 2-2. Two and two. He was trying to hit that one for a touchdown all the way to the football <laughs> field over there. I mean, yeah. he had bad intentions on that swing yeah. right there. So 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Over aggressive there. They throw it down to first, and that completes the strikeout. Yeah, nasty pitch right so there. From Evans Schultz. has a hat trick today. And we're not playing hockey, so it's not good in baseball. <laughs> now so it comes up to the grandpa, Bo Siegel. Not batting. First and uh, hit by pitch, a walk. Bo Siegel. And his last at bat. What do you do? I didn't write it down. He uh, flew out to the shortstop in his last That's what I got you here for. Yeah. You're always helping out, baby. <laughs> First pitch to Bo. Inside corner, strike one. And Bo's a guy, of course. He's going to be a very patient hitter. He's going to take a couple of pitches, especially going up against a guy that they have not seen today. Oh, checked his swing. He held up. They're going to appeal. He did not go, so the count goes a one and one I still love how, like, the home plate umpire asked the first base ump. Like, he can really see yeah. that from – that angle. Yeah, especially with left-handed <laughs> hitter. Up. But the catcher ass home plate, so you have to. Yeah, deal, yeah. yeah. Inside, ball two. Yeah, Bo gets the board here via walk. Then you know there will be a pinch runner. Yeah, that's the one negative about already using Nesikevich. Yep. But they got plenty of guys with speed on the in the dugout. And they hit him. So that is a lead. Up. There's a one-out walk. That's the second time he's got plunked today. Get on any way you can. And see, he tried to get out of the way. It still hit him. Exactly, right? <laughs> That's proven a point thing. Well, I mean, when your nickname's Grandpa, you're not going to move too fast. Yeah. So let's see if Stover does go with the pinch runner. He's sticking with this guy. Yeah, I, th I think at this point in the game, you have to, you know, just in case they don't get around. You need his back yeah. lineup. You can't afford to take him out. And he's done a good job playing first base here defensively, too. And I think everybody in here at Billy Louise Yarborough Stadium knows what Ian Acosta is probably about to do. They're hoping he can smash oh, one out of here. I thought he was going to lay down a bunt, but they're going to let him swing away. Oh, maybe he does. Strike call count goes 0-1. So, so i, I got to ask you real quick. There's one out. Are you a fan of that, or you let him swing? I am because you have Briar Litz coming up next. Two for Been three hot. today. He's got, a hot, he's got a hot bat, you know. Get Just walk him, though. Yeah. Then you got Alex Nesikevich. Yeah. Puts two runners on. And Nesikevich, the guy that had the walk-off hit against Yuba. You know, you got to get that guy in scoring position. Oh. Bottom of the night. Yeah. That's what you have to do right now. Gotta you can't risk a double play. Yeah. Got a big hole between first and second right now. Oh, and it's hit. Runner on the move, a little hit and run. So Bo gets the second base, torched hop. Ooh, what a grab there by Steve Demartini. Man, I tell you, Steve Demartini has been just eating everything up over at first base. He's a very athletic first Indeed. baseman. He's made some nice plays here today. Briar, Lynch. And you know what? That hit and run was perfect. Yeah. The job got done. You hit it to the right side of the field. 
And Bo's now on second base. The winning run on second base with Briar Litz. As we said, two for three today with a double and a single. And right here, I mean, you're probably not going to intentionally walk Litz here. You've got the matchup with the righty-righty. on righty, righty. And, of course, Nesikevich on deck, a lefty, so that would favor the batter there. Oh, the they are. Right. They are going to intentionally walk Briar Litz. So now it's going to come down to Alex Nesikevich. And Nesikevich had that... I mean, it wasn't the prettiest walk-off hit, but it's a walk-off. You got the win. Hit a chopper to short and able to beat it out as they tried to get Garland Webster tagged out at third base. Now, who was it that they were trying to intentionally walk him? He stuck his bat out and hit a home run. Was it Griffey? You know what? That's a question I don't know the answer to, but Griffey would be a good guess. I would think Griffey I think or Bonds. I, I'm pretty sure it had to be one of the two. I remember it was left-handed. It just came, it was high, and he took it the opposite field and crushed it. I, I, for some reason, I'm thinking it's Barry Bonds. Oh, and they called a balk. So Bo Siegel wow. moved to third base. No pitch. Wow. Just quick pitching. Didn't come set. And that's something you have to, you know, you have to come set. He was just rolling right through. Gave away 90 feet. And that was the first mistake made by this Marin team all game long. And I tell you what, I know it's huge to get that runner an extra 90 feet. But we're going to find out how strong... Ryan Schultz is mentally, because that's got to be in his head a little bit, just kind of frustrated. And we'll see if Nesikevich here can take advantage of that, because you can still look at Schultz right now. He, he still just looks a little frustrated. I think there's going to be a pinch runner coming in. So once, once again, you're tuned in to the Solano College Sports Network. You're home for Solano Sports. We're at Billy Louise Yarbrough Stadium, Bay Valley Conference matchup between Moraine and Solano. All tied up at one. Bottom of the ninth, two outs. Runners in Does first it get and any better than this? It, it doesn't. Beautiful Saturday in Fairfield, California. You can't beat this. And this is just starting off my beautiful Saturday. UFC 185 tonight. Johnny Hendricks, Matt Brown. Ton of basketball games on. But we got a dandy, as Big Kahuna always says right here. One to one, two outs, bottom of the ninth. Can Nesikevich do it again? As Stover's That's chatting with all his guys right here, Yuba, I mean Marin, meeting on the mound. And I tell you what, this is a long meeting on the mound. I wonder what's going on if he's injured or. Are they ordering a pizza? Yeah, well, the, the umpire's been standing out there for a while now. There we go. Yeah, it's like I was waiting for the umpire to take off his uh, blue union. Is he saying, hey, turn. throw it way outside, I'll call it a strike? Can we get a little tip? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> Maybe, you know, dinner plans later. I don't know. Or maybe they were asking about the Bach. Could that, be that, asking about that, that why he's out there, you know. That's actually probably what it was. Because right. he, he just rolled right through. He wasn't coming set. You have to come set. He was just, you know. And when you do have runners on like that, you're intentionally walking. You just forget sometimes. Yeah. But now it all comes down to this. Two outs, first and third. Alex Nesikevich up. He was a hero the last time. Can he be the hero again? Drop, ooh. Thought about dropping down the bunt. Strike the call. Count goes 0-1. Maybe a little bit of a safety squeeze. We know Nesikevich has plenty of speed. You can catch the tension with a knife right now, Zach. <laughs> right. So the 0-1. Schultz comes set. Kicks, fires. High and outside, ball one. Count goes to 1-1. And, and you can tell Marquez thought about it yeah. for a second, and he's like, no, nope, ball. But he hasn't called that all yeah. game. So that was a good job by staying consistent. So Nesta Kevich, though, he's got a nice hole right up the middle. Curveball outside, ball two. I can tell you the guy on deck's hoping he gets a walk oh, right yeah. here, Alvaro Rubacaba, who is the reason why this game's tied 1-1. Had a single. Bunt it over and then stole third. That has to be in Schultz's mind with a Rubicaba on deck. You know, you have to get this hitter so you add a little more extra pressure on yourself. Maybe he floats a fastball over and Nesikevich takes advantage. There it is. It's hit in the left field. It's going back. It's tailing. Going over his son. He can't make the play. And it's a foul ball. I'm sorry. That is not son. That is a... I believe that's Dominic DeVille. I think I saw 27 out there. Yeah, they don't tell us substitute defensive substitution well, back They here. should, but Mark's not doing his job. <laughs> nah, Mark's my boy. 
Yeah, you're just hoping it's Nesikevich right there. That ball's going to yeah. keep tailing left, and it did. He's got to get down on the bar here. Like you said, a huge gap right there up the middle. Yeah, the shortstop. So Tarantino. The 2-2 two, two pitch. Schultz comes set. He kicks, fires. And this one's hit right to the second baseman. He picks it up, throws it over to first for out number three. So we're heading to extras, folks. So top of the tenth inning. Look at the crowd here today. Off the top of the tenth. A lot of people showing up here Saturday afternoon Ryan at Billy and Luis Yarborough Stadium. So Ryan Schultz up at the plate now. He's two for four today with a single, a double, and a strikeout. Coates back on for second inning of work. First pitch ball. And Stover's got to feel pretty confident here going into extra innings. You got Adam Coates on the hill, and Coates was money in the last inning. Oh, and this one's hit right in the left field. So a leadoff single for Schultz. He's going to wheel, and he's going to stop at first base. So with the big boys up, the 3 4 5 hitters, this is the perfect time for Marin to really capitalize. You know, head coach Steve Berenger, you know, this is the exact guys you want up in this situation. How about the day Ryan Schultz having? I mean, three hits came in, one inning, no runs allowed. Steven Demartini. So Steven Demartini, couple of strikeouts today, a walk and grounded into that inning ending double yeah. play with bases loaded. So you know he wants to right the ship right now. And it's always tough to have your cleanup hitter get the bunt down, but that's a situation right here. Is have you, to. You gotta get the bunt down, you gotta get Ryan Schalk there into scoring position. You know, they haven't scored, they scored back in the sixth inning, so it's been a long drought. And just pitching. Pitching yeah. is right now is ball game. First pitch, you drop it down the bunt. Strike is called, so the count goes to 0-1. And also, you got to keep an eye on Schultz down there. He might be he might be taken off, possibly, to get a good jump. He has actually not stolen a base all year long. He's been caught twice, so maybe he won't be going. <laughs> <laughs> Runner on the move. Swing and a miss. Throw down a second. And got he got him. him. And he got him. What a throw by Ian Acosta and a great tag by Alvaro Rubacaba. And I mean, right there, you could tell that it was hit and run because Demartini swung at a pitch not even close to the strike zone. And man, what a play by Acosta because that's so tough to oh. make that throw, especially after Demartini swung through the ball and just threw a laser. An outstanding job, Rubacaba. Yeah. Make that tag big time. This one's chopped right to Rubacaba. Picks it up. Checks the throw, throws over to first for out number two. Huge. Big time. Oh, yeah. Nice throw by Ian Acosta, the catch there to get the runner, and then the very next pitch, you get a ground out to short. Yeah. Just like that, you got two outs. But now it brings up Dominic DeVille, the big boy here. He roped a double back in the second inning, but since then he's been hitless. He's one for four. Last at bat, he struck out. That was against Peyton Tyler. That was a strand of four consecutive strikeouts for Peyton Tyler. Adam Coates looking to get one more out and get his team back into the dugout. This one's lifted, short, shallow right field. Going back is Lenny. Oh, and he drops the ball. 
And that is down. So that's going to go down as E4, the first error of this ballgame. I think that was the wind and the sun all in one. Kind of a basket catch. Yeah, and I think he might have thought that ball was going to go a little further when he first thought to. And, yeah, like you said, tried to get the basket catch down and just kind of lost it. Looks like they're going to put in Sterling Champagne to run. And I believe he's in the same boat as Ryan Schalk, 0 for 2 in stolen bases. But you know what? You got Chris Heyman coming up. Like I've said before, he's leading the team in batting average and in hits. He has 12 RBIs on the year, one home run. So this guy is... He's their best hitter. He is their best hitter, and this is the situation you want him up with two outs, runner on first. One swing of the bat, he could put a crooked number up there. He had a single and is only at bat in the eighth. Back pick, and he's safe at first. Good snap throw by Ian Acosta. Champagne just getting back in there. You know, that's a good heads-up play. A guy coming off the bench, maybe like we said before, he'll kind of catch him leaning. So Luano, Coates delivers. Eight. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. That's a balk. It puts the runner on second base. and Oh, that is not good, folks. Wow. He's in a lot of pain. Hamstring. Possibly looks like he's grabbing his. I mean, it's just good. It's not elbow, shoulder, arm for a pitcher. But he's in a lot of pain. Hopefully it's just a cramp. Hopefully. They're stretching him out right now. And you, it's never good when a pitcher's ready to throw and then just eats the baseball and never lets it leave his hands. And you could tell when a pitcher throws off his glove and his hat. It's, I think it's just a cramp, though. I mean, that's interesting. That's that's his uh, plant leg. It really So when he planted down, and that's when it just started cramping up and didn't release the ball, gave a, it was a balk an extra 90 feet. To Sterling Champagne now it's just a base hit can score around with the speed yeah. of Champagne out there. But hopefully, like we said, it, hopefully it is a cramp and nothing too serious. And you can just tell by the way they're stretching him out. He's just cramping out there. It's nothing serious. You guys want to go to a commercial? We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Okay. And we'll be back after this. Solano Community College transformed my life and gave me the opportunities I needed to succeed. I received the same university caliber education without the pressures of debt holding me back. Affordable and flexible, I fulfilled my undergraduate classes. Getting to the information I truly have a passion for. The decision to attend SCC empowered my future and made my dream of attending Yale University a reality. Solano Community College, the educated choice. So we're back here in the top of the 10th inning. Runner on second base, advanced on the Bach. Uh, good sign, Adam Coates did walk off under his own power, so it must have been just a cramp. So that young man, hopefully, yeah. hopefully he's okay. With Chris Ross now on the mound, a 5-2-9 ERA. And he has a tough task at hand now. First pitch, low for ball one. Ball two, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's rare to see a, a pitcher come in yeah. when it's not what he started, but uh, this is a tough situation for a guy to come in. You got to come in after an injury, not really ready, ready. Swing and a miss, strike one. Good use of the changeup right there. That's Chris Ross' best pitch. I think he had a lot of movement going down in the zone. And Chris Ross making his ninth appearance, fifth time coming out of the bullpen, and he's really a guy. If he can get hot, this team could do a lot of damage. Swing and a miss, strike two. So back to back swinging and misses. Chris Ross really at the end of last year was, man, this kid was lights out. And this year it's been a, a little bit of a slow start for Chris Ross, but if he can get things going, especially here, get a little momentum if he can get out of this inning. This one's hit right to Rubicaba, fields it, throws it over to first. High and overthrows it, and a run will come in to score. We don't see that too much with Rubel Cabo making a big time there. And you could tell he had a little bit of trouble getting the ball out from his glove and then just airmailed the throw, tried to rush it a little bit. You know, that's back-to-back -back errors. 
for Solana right now where he had uh, Josh Lenny drop the ball, which would have been the third out. And then he had a Bach in between that also. I mean, air, Bach, air. air. Yeah. You know, what we're talking about, it's been such a clean game in the 10th. They we should have we just kept it to ourselves, yep. man. You know how that broadcaster jinx works, especially with me. <laughs> so James Potts coming up to the plate. He is 0 for 3 today. He was also hit by the pitch. I should say ticked by the pitch on the sleeve. I can tell you what, though. The guy leading off the bottom of the inning can't wait to get up oh there. Yeah. That's the guy that just committed the air, Mr. Rubicaba. Outside, ball two. And you know now Chris Ross came back with those coupled strikes, and he got the ground ball. Right now he's can't be too fine. Just throw it up there. You got to trust in your defense. Runner on the move. Hit right back to Rubicaba. High hop, makes a grab, throws it to first for out number three. So the damage is done. Marin goes up 2-1, heading to the bottom of the 10. Bottom of the 10th inning here. Solano's down to their final three outs, trailing two to one with Alvaro Rubacaba coming up to the plate. One for four today. Got a big hit back in the eighth inning, let off. Stole the bag, scored a run. And he just did made that crucial error for Solano, allowing that score, the run to score. So nobody, nobody more wants this game more than Alvaro right now. Yeah, this is a big spot, big situation. We saw what he did in, in the box last time in a big spot. Curveball in there, strike call count goes to 0-1. And, and Rubalcaba led off that inning back in the eighth single, as you mentioned. Got bunted over to second, stole third, and scored. This one's lifted foul down the right field line, so he falls behind quickly, 0-2. You know, this is one of those things for baseball players, you have to have amnesia. You yeah. can't think it's what so you did hard there. Though. Exactly. You just got to come up there and just say, hey, I'm going to make it happen. And especially quickly falling behind 0-2 also. This one's hit right to the shortstop. Tarantino picks it up, throws it kind of hop. Wow. It just barely gets. Man, D. Martini. This yeah. kid has been money with the glove over at first base. He's been picking balls. He's been getting the long ones. So now Joey Dotson with one out steps up to the plate. Dotson 0 for 3. Has also a sacrifice bunt, so he's due. The rainy NorCal player of the week. Over is wishing he would have waited and not had it all. Dumps it out oh. right in front. This could be a tough throw. Man. And just barely gets Dotson for out number two. Richard Herrada made that look way, way too easy right there. Just got out of the squat real quick. Picked it up. Bare hand, 180. Throw on the money. Solano down to their final out. Number 24, Josh Lenny. And you know, if he would have got that butt just a little bit further out, I think he could have had it, but just dumped it out right in front. And Josh Lenny, hoping to make up for that first there he had in the top of the 10th. High and tight, ball one. So Lenny, the RBI leader for the Solano Falcons up at the plate, looking to just get on base and give Garland a, sh give Garland a shot. Ball two. And Lenny's the one that tied it up with the big RBI single back in the eighth. 16 ribbies now for the lanky second baseman. This one's hit high and deep in the center field. Going back is Potts. Potts is under it. And he makes the grab for out number three. So 
Marin wins the game 2-1. to one. Yeah, big time win for the Mariners coming here and winning at Solano's Field here at Bill and Luis Yarbrough Stadium. And uh, this is a, a well-played baseball game, though, and it, it, it kind of sucks for Solano that it came down to airs and a balk and maybe your best pitcher. Who, hopefully it's not a serious injury. Hopefully it was just a cramp. But it's a well-played baseball game. And, uh, man, 6-1, yeah. and 6-1. One, and one. Solano, Marin, both tied atop first now in the BVC. You know, this is one of those games that doesn't sit – that doesn't taste good in your mouth, you yeah. know what I mean? This is like a gut punch to, you know, Solano had this game and, you know, very all the way around, but they just shot themselves in the foot in the extras. I think this is one of those games that they're going to have to build off of and really take it, and they're going to go on to this next game. I feel sorry for Marin for the next game these two are playing because they're yeah. coming out for blood and revenge. Yeah, so Adam Coates gets his first loss on the season, now 2-1. and one. And uh, Ryan Schlock gets his first win, I believe, on the season. So he did, uh, that guy was very impressive. Yeah. He had three hits, and then he comes in. Hey, coach, I'm gonna come pitch the ninth and the tenth, and I'm gonna shut down Solano. And uh, very impressed with both these teams. And uh, I, I really wouldn't be surprised. Obviously, they're gonna play Tuesday, but I, I got a feeling both these teams will be playing in the playoffs here oh, this yeah. year. These are two well-coached teams. They play great defense. They have great pitching, but most importantly, they both have really good bullpens. Oh yeah, you know, well-pitched game, just up until the tenth. The errors, like you said, cost it. So. Final score here at Billy and Luis Yarbrough Stadium. Marin 2, Solano 1. Marin on top of the Bay Valley Conference at 6 and 1. Solano falls a 6 and 1 also, but the tiebreaker off of today. So for Zach Poff, I'm Stash Moy, and all of us here at the Solano College Sports Network, thank you for watching.